है थोड़ी बाकी लाइट से कहानी बंद चल रहा है नहीं नहीं क्या पिक बोर्ड में ना ये क्या और शुरू लगे नहीं सुनी तो सुनी Seal number five. Seal number five, my lords. Please, seal number five, please, your lordship. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Pandya has mentioned on the Friday, your lordship. May I request for Monday, uh, next Monday? Sir, seal number five, your lordship. Here, Mr. Pandya, Asim Pandya is appearing. Please Hello. Using the mic. Yes. It is, is on. It is on. It's working. Oh, yes. Huh. Here, Mr. Pandya appearing, your lordship. He has some difficulty for 25, 26, and 27. May I request for next Monday, your lordship, or Tuesday? Actually, Any there was some urgency in the matter, Lord. I had mentioned it on the last date of hearing, Lord. But can it be kept on Thursday, subject to the convenience of the Honorable Court, Lord? Twenty ninth, please, your I'm okay. Uh, Mr. Manan Bhatt, right? Yes. Other side has made out an urgency. Twenty nine. Number six. Number seven. 
हेलो सीजन नंबर सिक्स में प्रेजेंट हो सॉरी सीजन नंबर सिक्स में प्रेजेंट हो सर सीरियल नंबर सेवनटीन टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स यस मैं दिस पर ट्राई रिक्वेस्ट फॉर एट मिलोड इफ कन्वीनियंट सॉरी ऑन एट मिलोड आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग इट फॉर एट मिलोड Why for condemnation of delay? Eight? No. What is happened? Milord, the original claimant expired pending hmm. reference. Hmm. So, Milord, uh, for correction of the award, hmm. application was made on Friday. The presiding officer has pronounced the order, hmm. but certified copy is yet to be obtained. It is already applied on Friday, but for getting it, it will take at least a week, Milord. Hmm. So, on a safer side, I am requesting on eight, if convenient to my lord. The correction is already made. Were you present when the correction was made? Sorry, were you present when the correction was made? The counterpart was present. It was present. Yes. Okay. You know for sure that it has been passed on that day. I am sure. I can make a statement that order is pronounced. In that case, okay. we can allow this uh, uh, of bringing the heirs on the cut. I have no this, objection uh, because okay. other rest of the appeals are already admitted. Correct. That's why only the in these five appeals. Uh, you can we'll permit you to produce that certified copy in a week's time, so that yeah. we may not have to rotate this matter. Correct. Right. And uh, sure. uh, any objection? And uh, whatever the order that while admitting the appeal we are passing for disbursement of amount is only subject to his. Uh, 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 this is for enhancement. So okay. uh, no then there will be no, no question. Order. Just simply admit and to be heard with. Which is the give, number of appeal? Please give, give the number. Yes. Please use the mic. Serial number twenty seven. Mm -hmm. With the joint request, I am uh, requesting some accommodation. Why do you want time? Sorry. Why do you want time? A lot of we need to refer the paper book. As such, it is ready, but we need some time to refer the paper book, and only for that purpose. Twenty seven three four double six of nineteen. Uh, jointly, the parties are making the request for. It's a family suit, right? Mm -hmm. So now, just need to proceed Lachi. next week. Hmm? <coughs> Matter to be proceeded on fourth of August. Last of serial number twenty nine and thirty. Mm -hmm. Same request. I'm requesting with uh, consent of other side some accommodation. We have already signed our proposal, settlement proposal to the bank. Bank mm -hmm. is yet. Mr. Churgar has uh, is appearing, ask but we Mr. have taken Churgar, consent. Lodge. Please ask Mr. Churgar to be here. Lodge. Because in a 2018 matter or 19 appeal, we'll need to know whether, in fact, the proposal that you are sending. Is being considered or not? Otherwise, yeah. and we will wait. Please ask him to be here. My lord, matter of seat number thirty. My lord, there is a uh, response number five is showing unsolved. I have to solve them while after after giving a proper uh, address of the response number five. So requesting for some accommodation. So in 2020, when will you give them address? Uh, my lord, we are we are trying to serve him, but uh, so the public notice the, in that case. Public notice is the only way out. My lord, we are trying to get his new address. Correct. We'll get uh, the new address within that. See, week. this is a matter where uh, the RNP also has been received, and it is only because of non-service uh, to this person that we are not in a position to pro proceed. My lord, as a last chance, my lord, may grant some time. A week's time. Lord. The last week, otherwise we'll pass an order for public notice. First appeal, seven twenty of two thousand twenty. And in all old matters, we Lord. would request all the advocates not to ask for the time. Lord. We can understand that for preparing yourself for a week or ten days or uh, two weeks, you can ask. But for service after two three years, it's too difficult for the court to then. And these are not the things which we should be monitoring. <clears throat> The request is made for furnishing the address of the respondent number five, who is not served till date. 
we also noticed that uh, direct service was sought for and DS affidavit has not been filed so far as this respondent, this respondent is concerned. Let us fresh address be given within one week. Otherwise, the, note, the, the order for public notice shall be issued. Second, second August. Number 36, right? Consent may request of some time. I have sent the application for giving airs on record for affirmation. I am awaiting it. Airs are to be brought on record? Yes, for unsolved uh, expired respondents. Hmm. First appeal 434 of 2021. Learned advocate Mr. Dave seeks the time to bring unsolved expired respondents' airs to be placed on the uh, Yes. This is that matter will actually recall that uh, marine matter, well spun matter, where you will actually say, please to issue notice. I take a, we have taken direct service. The direct service affidavit uh, I have filed, it shows that the company is closed for many years, including a lot of government notices are also stuck there. Uh, I have attached photograph also. So may I be permitted if your lordship permits me uh, service by publication in newspaper, Divya Bhaskar, if your lordships can just oblige it's me by that order. Bound order right? I make it uh -huh. bound order. Any Gujarat Samachar, Sandesh or Divya Bhaskar, any that your lordship pleases. Bound order doesn't have its own, but then it could be anywhere. Yeah. SCA 11035 of 2022. Please give us the file so that we can pass out. At the end of the uh, board, Wait, we will be so my, my colleague may be certain because I have some certain. difficult lordship. Wait. Serial number 70. I feel it is because this is a matter pertaining to a decree passed in favor of the husband. Not day on Saturday, I have been served with the reply filed by learned friend. I have called upon the lady. Since there is a difficulty on her part, she could not come. I am requesting for Thursday because I am praying for the staying of that decree. The decree is passed in favor of the husband, relying upon grounds of cruelty. Uh, did we call the parties? Did we call the parties? No, Lordship said not yet, because uh, in view of section 37, your ladyship has said to my learned friend that uh, in that view, he has filed a reply. I have been served on Saturday. I called upon the lady, but there was some difficulty. She was not well. So I was supposed to request for priority, but since in these set of circumstances, because the averments made in this reply, I need to just. Well, in that case, uh, we can keep it on the 8th of August. Oh, may I request first? first. Yes. Yeah. 8th of August. And one request, if it can be on top of the board, because I am in civil application, I am praying for the stay of that decree. Okay. Top of, I'm grateful to you. So not top of the book, just say first 20 matters. Hmm? Not sale number 77. Yes. But uh, I'm requesting for priority subject to the convenience of the honorable court. Certainly, we'll just listen. Okay. I'm okay. Please may call out the, the separate note. Yes, may I have the liberty to mention as item seven? Yes, we okay. received the message please through the court master please, please, yes. that uh, learned government leader is down with the COVID, so it's not mm -hmm. uh, feasible for her to conduct. That's what he had sent the message. All right. In that case, uh, after about uh, what are what are the norms? After most two weeks, if I may request, because whereas uh, since yesterday only it has. Can it be fourth for the time being? You know, because you know, I am also not available you know, uh, from uh, 10th through 25th. You know, I'm... Uh, what is the COVID regime presently? So one, one week. week one week. week. Five years or one week. Depends uh, upon uh, the uh, person to subject person. to correction. Subject but... to, yes, 10 days minimum because uh, then it would manage uh, for her to resume soon. Manage thereafter, I don't know manage what would be the position. Right. Therefore, I'm requesting for a safer side two weeks. Certainly. So fourth will be in the I, I believe ten days okay. because thirty first. Hmm. What? Some reasonable well, as I may request my learned senior friend to be some no, reasonable because it is no, not I, that we are. No, again, I am not. Very well, I, am, I, am, I am not trying to. No, no pressure. There is no pressure. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. That, uh, no. 
we do understand that uh, she would be needing some uh, rest, etc. Yes. We'll keep it uh, on the fourth presently and let him complete his part of submissions. Okay. And in any case, this will not be completed just in a day's time. You can take, you can be here because you're going to assist the learned uh, yes. uh, government leader. So that can be over because then he's not available for a very long time. Then so, again, so there will be a gap. No, there will be not gap. Because you will argue in his absence. This 2018 and the entire I, group I'm is 2018. I am therefore my request. So fine. So we, we're just granting you two weeks time as per your request and Please. we do understand. But then let this be on the fourth and he can you can complete your submissions on the If fourth. I may request this wise, if it happens mm -hmm. to the honorable mm -hmm. court and my learned friends, when my learned senior friend resumes with the next day, it may be posted, but as we'll be here as why well. are you insisting that? Because I mean you we, we do understand and then we are this is this is we are saying on the fourth because no, then I I may I may just I am making a humble request before the honorable court. I'm only saying for the time being it can be kept on fourth. Minute. Obviously, minute, if she has some difficulty, minute, and uh, then because there is no question. And I, I, I never object to adjournments. Because but only thing is minute, that I even I am not there. I am missing about six working days. Minute. That's why there are holidays in between. Minute, but I am missing those because I'm not here. Piecemeal was hearing. That is how I was requesting. Uh, this requires was at least we have eighth and tenth also. Minute. So I think we should. Minute, I, minute, I will not take more than. Uh, one and a half hours. One and a half hours. And I believe even my other friend will not be, I, I think we can finish in one session, now, frankly. All right. But uh, if, uh, if you think that uh, because the 10 days is something, you know, which is there, we can keep it on the eighth parameter. Eighth, no problem. Eighth, exactly. We can so keep that, it on the eighth. Fair 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 eighth. So that, that will be uh, fair fair so there's be more than. Um, oh, yes, absolutely. Because we have 31st, so it will be almost 13 days. First appeal 857 of 18 because of uh, non availability of learned government leader, learned uh, advocate, uh, learned AGP request for time that is being posted uh, on 8th of August to be heard parenterally. Obliged. Your Worship, may I deliver? My apologies, I missed up. Serial okay. number six, two of my matters are also at. Eh? I had a talk with Mr. Sure. <coughs> Among we are, we are uh, no objection to fixing the date. In fact, we should have been keen. No, no, we are going to hear. So, we're going to hear. At least my two matters may be fixed. And no, we, are, we are going to hear, Mr. Uh, they may be separated also from the yes, group sir. because they are packed together internally. But for the rest of the group, we are not concerned. No, no, so why? far as final ring, fixing of final ring, maybe on one day, but... No, no, it is it is today fixed for that. It is today fixed for that only. It is fixed for final hearing. Then, my Lord, your owner may keep it next week, we will proceed. Today, I am also in the middle of part of the matter. Before the Honorable First Court. No, please wait. This is uh, an... All will require some time. Please wait. Please wait. We'll, we have called out this and then uh, nobody, no request had come. Let it be called out in our, in our routine. Please call out. Let it be. But that serial number 17 to 26. First appeal number is 3287 of 19. 3287 of? And allied matters of huh. 2019. Admitted 19. on 14th August 2019. Okay. Justice came. Uh, Doesn't after, matter. We don't need to. So it's a high court. Lots of. Huh? So CA one uh, is for uh, anyway. Yes. We will we will pass the order yeah. when it has been called out. We don't require your presence also. Huh? My presence? No, your presence is not needed. We have already great. heard you. I am grateful to my. Uh, please call out. Let's file a signal. Okay. It can be tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Number two, Ashish Desai. Mr. Ashish Desai, uh, Mr. Desai will start at four o'clock. Please, ma'am. Huh? Hello. Number three, three, uh, two, three, four, five. They're all together, two, three, and four. All the matters are together. Number five, Number six. 
ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ready with the matter no i have prepared the but since they are saying that they are going to submit a charge hmm. let me see the charge otherwise hmm. i am ready what what chart uh, is mr mehta wanting to produce mr mehta about every case uh, the court had asked us last time to prepare a very very small fact sheet hmm. because uh, all are premature retirement as such hmm. so the assessment done hmm. and uh, the years of service uh, what led to uh, the, the the complaints which are which were received by the department this is a uh, this is a weeding out process yes. and that had uh, done yes. right in yes. a in post 55 yes. years period yes. exactly all right exactly all all of so therefore i mentioned last time this is was there, a was there, in that sense okay was there uh, any kind of uh, stigma attached to any of this no. no 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 it's it's pre- that's why i don't say it is not actually compulsory retirement it is premature retirement compulsory retirement is actually a penalty which is imposed after a full fledged department inquiry there is no full fledged department inquiry here it is a weeding out process not because uh, the supreme court has said that that can be done by any employer uh, weed out the deadwood so when that assessment was done and after which we not the high court came to the conclusion that these persons are required to be prematurely retired so that's so there is no question of any stigma as such the rules any breach of rules yes. that's what you know they are uh, their argument is you know but according to us you know there is no breach this because is, it is this is a really worse than stigma so far as my clients are concerned service anyway, record was excellent Hmm. very good ah, that's all, that's on merits so that's exactly. on merits okay, obviously that's on merits no reason they missed out the date also which is prescribed by the honorable anyway, mr mr that's on merits but i don't think you know natural justice anyone has uh, really uh, there is uh, the argument is that there is a violation of the rules because and what the, what happens you know once uh, this kind of a retirement will they get the pension and all oh yes 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 all all yeah absolutely so that's why some of the this is not a penalty you know that, that's what even the supreme court has said that this is not a penalty premature retirement is no penalty so the grading was seen disposal was seen and the complaints were seen vigilance complaints essentially these three things are there you know and that's how you know the decision was taken you know to reach, uh, to uh, retire these uh, judicial officers you know that's once the vigilance complaints are there kindly see the submission then it is stigmatic when you consider the complaints which are made and you compulsory retire it is a stigmatic you know then why you uh, 
dispense with inquiry. No, the Supreme Court. The substance was there in the complaint. The Supreme Court says without that, the the Supreme Court says without this aspect. It is open for an employer to do a preliminary inquiry and come to the conclusion that there is some material against him. If that is so, may not the employer can thereafter may not put an end to the contract. <clears throat> that is no stigma at all. But if in the order you mention that we are retiring you because of this reason, that reason, because of these complaints, you know that's a different matter altogether. So as such, you know this preliminary inquiry is otherwise you know it's not possible for any uh, person you know to get weeded out in this process. You say this that uh, for a public purpose in the public interest. Correct. What what are the words used? Yes, in, public, in, the, you know, in the larger public interest, yes, in the public for example, interest? yes, I, I can just uh, uh, in this would be the sample one order. You know, uh, I'll just read this you know, in exercise of the past conferred under Rule 10.4a.1 and 2 of the Gujarat Civil Service Pension Rules 2002, read with Rules 21 and 21.2 of the Gujarat State Judicial Service Rules 2005, the government is pleased to accept the recommendation of the High Court. To pass an order to retire the following member of the judicial service in public interest with immediate effect. This is the order passed in all cases. In public interest. So, conveniently, they give a goodbye to the normal process of holding inquiry in public interest. It seems that we are even worse than those for whom there are serious complaints, according to my learned senior friend, and serious inquiries. We are worse than them. For us, even inquiry is not required according to them. That is something unheard of. If we are bad, we are bad. What is the rule 21.1 and 21.2 says? Because yes, the Gujarat the judicial state judicial services exactly. rules. Yes, not. So even the rules are N4 A1 and yes. 21.1 and 21.2. Yes, not. I, not the rules are also placed uh, mm. on record. I'll just quote them. In the first matter, they are not there. In some cases, thank you. Twenty one addition of certain service for the purpose of pension. Notwithstanding anything containing these rules, the governor shall, on the recommendation of the High Court, if he is of the opinion that it is in the public interest to do so, have the absolute right to retire any member of the service who has attained the age of 50 years by giving him notice of not less than three months in writing or three months pay and allowances in view of such notice. Whether a then sub rule two, whether a member of the service should be should be retired in public interest under sub rule one shall be considered at least three times. That is, when he is about to attain the age of 50 years, 55 years, and 58 years. Provided nothing in sub rule 2 shall be construed as preventing consideration of a member of the service at any time other than those mentioned therein. So, actually, 50, 55, 58 is mandatory. You have to follow. And the rule proviso says that you can even, in addition to this, you can do it even otherwise. So, this argument about uh, being treated unfairly, you have to hold a departmental inquiry. There is no challenge to this uh, rule 21. Minute. There is a question. Minute. We can do, we have to, we have the duty bound. Otherwise, we will be falling for all of these rules. I have challenged the virus of this rule. There is no state. And let them make out a ground for challenging the virus. Yes, yes, I will make, ah, yes, exactly. make, make it out. All right. Written submission has come from uh, Babu Bhai Dabi. My Lord, it, it was uh, for the document application. I have filed it. And call for some document. On behalf of the applicant. Huh? Civil application. What is what is the uh, what are the documents? Regarding the disposal, other judicial officer. So they they're giving you giving it today. Sorry, mm -hmm. those details are you. you but yes, but I, I believe you know, we'll receive it from the uh, from the law officers branch. You know, we we take instructions. You know, so we can we can give it to them. You know, as early as you know, in, in probably uh, two days time or even by the uh, by evening. It's only gone for verification. You know, because that is it's ready otherwise. I mean, I don't want to give it and there are you know, if that 
nothing uh, they, there should be nothing wrong on facts at least you know because i just we have stated everything but they said that some people have retired so we need to mention that also fine so uh, i think by today evening or by tomorrow or latest oh, yes. uh, you'll be in a position to give yes we will we, we'll instruct the department accordingly you know, so there is no question These are all for SC of 2016 and 17. Correct. Mine is of 2009. Hmm? <coughs> Sorry. Mine My learned friends is of 2009 and 2011. Right? There are two matters, 10. I believe. Yes. 10, 2010. So they are both required. As such. Want to be able to serve. And this rule is framed pursuant to, I, I, I don't remember the decision, Supreme Court's decision, which has mandated this exercise, which has mandated, we will we'll get that decision also, you know, because that, in fact, two, these are 2005 rules. So the precursor was a Supreme Court decision, you know, I forget the name, you know, it's probably, was it? I, you know, I don't recall, you know, but we'll get that also. You know. So that is how uh, ultimately this rule was framed. SCA 20701 of 2017. Um, all the all the petitioners are desirous of uh, getting the details. Are desirous of getting the individual details in relation to their respective cases. According to Learned Senior Advocate, Mr. Mehta, assisted by Mr. Himangsha, the Learned Counsel appearing for the Respondent High Court, has urged that the details are ready and the copy of which to each Learned Counsel and the party in person shall be supplied in a day's time. Let the same be furnished on or before 27th. Just give it on or before 27th after no, verifying yes, all the, all the yes, details. Do that. And uh, we um, fix this matter on the 8th of... Uh, sure. 8th. Fair enough. Huh? Sure, that is 19, as I said, this is AIR 1993 2493 All India Judges Association, where uh, the Supreme Court says the potential for continued utility shall be assessed and evaluated by the appropriate committee of the judges of the respective high courts constituted and headed by the chief justice of the high courts and the evaluation shall be made on the basis of judicial officers, past record of service, character roles, quality of judgments and other relevant matters. High court should undertake and complete the exercise in case of officers about to attain these 50 years. So this is how it flows. 1993 Supreme Court. My AIR 1993 SC Supreme Court 2493. You know, our reply is a detailed reply where we have uh, cited all decisions which I mean, govern the case. Even that compass, this premature retirement is no punishment. Natural justice is not required to be followed. Not, uh, the question of hearing them. And all those judgments also cited, not, and even this judgment where which requires us to not, make an assessment every three years and five years and ten years, uh, uh, eight years. It's a detailed reply not, of about 30 pages. In all cases, we have filed this. And that's how not, the rules were framed, 2005. There were no rules actually uh, before 2005. There were old, but, but, but they were not governing this. Process. In Mr. Bud's matter, the reply starts on page 37. Mr. Dabi? Very well. Yes, sir. 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 In some of the matters, senior advocate Sudhir Nanavati appears. So it is inconvenient for him on eight. So may I request a week prior to look? I mean, uh, we do not mind, but then uh, the last week will be very, very uh, busy. So, uh, so therefore, uh, uh, and uh, we do understand that there are so many councils, so everybody it will not be convenient. So maybe you know, uh, it's for you to decide as to how to go about it. On the eighth, comparatively less matters, and this is an entire group, and it will go on for a long time. Hmm? 
So the matters in any case, we not won't get over an eighth. So we not missed a So maybe he can something. argue on the tenth. If eighth is not convenient, we can keep it on the tenth. Legal aspects will be the same, Mr. Trivedi. So it will be. Uh, Mallows, my apologies. Mallows, it's 10, 8 to 10, he's not. Here. Sorry? 8 to 10, he's not here. My request for fifth or seventeen. Seventeen. We'll see. Let let this begin on on eighth. We will see on that day. Hmm? And given writing your written uh, submissions briefly in two to three pages. If it is not uh, convenient, uh, uh, we will see what can happen. But then we'll tell because see, see so many matters is not possible for us to then uh, decide it on a particular. So maybe, and as they're saying that they're promising uh, to consume the entire day. So you do not know really? as to how the matter progresses. Hmm? Yes. Bear, in, bear it in mind that 8th and 10th, your council is not there. Yes. You're appearing for how many of them? Uh, two or three matters. Which matters? Sir? <laughs> one, Sorry. One six five nine one. One eight one eight two nine one. Uh, one six five nine one and and one one eight two nine one of sixteen. Mm -hmm. And one eight three eight three of sixteen. Okay. Fine. Just give briefly in the writing. You take the details from. Uh, Senior Advocate Mr. Mehta or, or Mr. Shah, they'll be providing the details and thereafter you can give your brief uh, written submissions and we'll see about the three. Let them complete it. Listen this two. And papers. we'll give a list of citations not to them, you know, because it, it won't be possible to give all advocates a bunch of the judgments we're relying on. You know, we, fact, give the uh, we would, we would just fair? want uh, each one of you, uh, Mr. Trivedi and uh, okay. from his side, please give your brief note in about two, two uh, pages huh? not more than two to three pages Mine and all uh, all uh, substantiating uh, authorities should be exchanged between the parties so that it what cut is the time it's not upon it. It's not upon it. it is ready but subject to since they have yes, yes, yes. Then that's why i have yes. kept it here please my notes with citation is ready sir obliged yes, sir obliged
Process may kindly have a look at not the prayer uh, prayers on page twenty blocks. But the essential uh, challenge. Uh, was to the prescription of uh, minimum fifty percent of qualifying marks. So far as uh, the preliminary examination is concerned, Lord. Uh, Lord, coupled with uh, the other prayers, Lord. <coughs> A prayer E and prayer F, Lord. But uh, now the question papers, answer keys, and OMR sheets are being provided to the respective candidates, my lord. Uh, therefore, my lord, uh, so far as uh, prayer E is concerned, uh, my lord, it will not survive, my lord. So prayer clause F, my lord. There also, my lord, um, that will also not survive because uh, not the provisional answer key is, uh, uh, my lord, published. Uh, not the objections uh, are being invited from the candidates. And uh, not thereafter, the final answer is being published, Lord. Lord, uh, the respondent authority had issued an advertisement, Lord, in the year 2016. Lord, the advertisement is on page 23. Uh, Lord, by the said advertisement, in all, 112 vacancies were notified. But 12 vacancies were there for regular. Uh, Successful and unsuccessful candidates with the marks, Lord. But the with marks the are not being published, uh, Lord. Marks are not being given to the individual uh, candidates. Lord, after this the process budget? of recruitment is uh, completed, Lord, mm. upon request, Lord, it is being provided. Otherwise, it's given. Uh, it's on a on a request that it is being provided. Yes, it is. Can it not be done, you know, as is being done in various other uh, public it service commissions? Done, but as far as this recruitment process No, no, is we are just, we are asking you, what is the method you are following? That's we are trying to know. So in the method which you are following or which is being followed, you are giving it to them on asking. Yes. Right? So can that not be supplied with their, it, it could be opened by them only in their email. And as you are also well aware that in... Uh, public service commissions and everywhere they're sending but then you alone can open it with yes. your own password so the password also sometimes will be sent to you or it could be on uh, uh, whatever the way they would describe suppose pan card or whichever way as we are yes. getting from the it so likewise you know you can just do that what is the present method that is being adopted as far as not the general uh, instructions in this regard are concerned. I'll have to take instructions from to take the department. Right. As far as we were just trying to know, process, trying to know from you. By tomorrow, I'll, I'll be able to. Do it. Yes. yes, I'm not so far as uh, I'm not uh, the public service commissions are concerned. GPSC is concerned, but uh, 
so far as the preliminary examination is concerned uh, not the, the list of the candidates with their roll numbers is being published but the candidate concerned would be in a position to know uh, his uh, own marks uh, by giving a password on the website of uh, the commission and most of the exams most yes. of the college is also doing most of the public uh, you know examinations yes. uh, bodies also are doing the same so far as the main examination is concerned not main mm. examination and uh, uh, oral interviews are concerned mm. uh, not while publishing the select list not mm. the marks of uh, the candidates are also uh, not disclosed along with the select list itself not mm. mm. that is not being done not so far as the recruitment process undertaken by the respondent authority is concerned uh lord in this examination what happened lord is mm. that lord in all 112 posts were notified mm. uh lord the candidate 6168 candidates applied for being considered mm. for appointment mm. uh lord out of them that due to prescription of 50% of qualifying marks in the preliminary examination lord only 86 candidates uh were found eligible for appearing in the main examination hmm. but in this context lord uh, the argument before the honorable court is to the effect that lord uh, so far as preliminary examination is concerned lord uh, it is an elimination test uh, lord the marks which are awarded in the preliminary examination are not considered for the purpose of selection on the post in question for the selection according to the rules is made on the basis of the marks which are obtained in the main examination as well as viva boss lord not the, the recruitment rules are on record lord lord uh, may kindly have a look at the recruitment rules lord so you would want to say that the 50% marks in the preliminary exam is uh, not no, desirable not, it will not is it desirable not desirable that's what you see no it is not required at all lord that is what i am trying to convey because it's a screening point. exam therefore please lord so lord, ultimately so then then what do you how do you do this yes uh, lord uh, lord say for example in this recruitment process itself mm. lord 112 posts were advertised mm. in order to see to it that all these 6000 and odd candidates who had applied for being mm. considered are not required to uh and uh, uh, not required to uh, appear in the main examination mm. uh, not a process of weeding out mm. is required to be done so that not a required number of candidates can be called for appearing in the main examination for so normally so far as main examination is concerned either six times or 10 times candidates are no, no. yes main main exam is the two right and uh, not so far as viva boss is concerned not three, three times, times or five times three times five sometimes times. five so times sometimes three times yes uh, i'm not here what happened that not because of the prescription of 50% qualifying marks in the preliminary examination not in effect selection uh, the respondent authority had weeded out the, not the, um, almost all the candidates so you would you would want to say that depending on the total number of the candidates who would apply for the preliminary exam for civil judge please not the court should decide as to whether the examination for preliminary uh, screening should be held or not no, is no, that what no, you want no, to no. say But so far as prelim- conducting of preliminary examination is concerned, so there is no difficulty at all. Mm. But the difficulty is with regard to prescription of fifty percent qualifying marks in the. So how do you do then? What are you saying? Not It should are. be thirty-five percent. No. Then no marks are required to be prescribed. At so all, like, since it's a competitive exam, so accordingly it should be done. No. Uh, not this ultimately is a screening test, Lord. Mm. Not the purpose is. to wait out uh, not the long list of candidates yes uh, so that uh, all the 6000 candidates are not required to call in the main exam Correct. and their papers are not required to be checked right. therefore appropriate number of candidates all screening exams are for that purpose please not right therefore, so the first layer goes and then comes the second layer so far, so but then for, if we don't prescribe any any any, 50, any percentage say not even 30% not even 50% how do you think that in a competitive exam it's going to work no this so far as preliminary examination is concerned the marks which are obtained in the preliminary examination are not counted very for true. the purpose of selection very true no please the, use the mic use the mic please no the result of the examination is on the basis of uh, the marks obtained in the uh, main, main examination and in oral interview yes no the contention before the honorable court is to the effect that no 
certain number of candidates are required to be determined say for example uh, uh, for the purpose of main examination 10 times uh, the number of posts advertised uh, that much candidates should be uh, admitted for appearing in the main examination therefore lord the respondent authority will have to publish the list and the candidates up to 10% and 10 times uh, are required to be uh, admitted in the examination, main examination, irrespective of the marks uh, being obtained yeah, by so them. So even if they get two marks in preliminary examination, yes, yes, they should be getting there. Uh, or the judgments because, are to the effect mm -hmm. uh, that ultimately uh, the purpose of this test. Now what happened? Because of this test, Lord, uh, sufficient number of candidates are not available even for appearing in the main examination. Uh, in the next recruitment process, uh, not the same candidates are going to appear in the examination, but they will qualify and uh, ultimately they will be appearing in the main examination. Therefore, Lord, the purpose which is sought to be achieved because of uh, the prescription. Let's look at the, uh, the decisions. Please note. Courts have been saying that if there is an unduly large number of candidates that are appearing, then in that case, you can have a screening test. Now, if you have advertised, say, about 120 posts, right? The total post advertised were 120. 112. Uh, 112. Now, for say for 100, let's take it 100. What will become the 10 times? The 100 1, posts 000. will become 1,000. 1, so if there are 6,000 candidates, according to them, there are a huge number. candidates can be eliminated. Lord. And how? It's just that you have to see once they the an exam. Uh, merit is required to be published. Not the first 1,000 candidates are required to be permitted in the main examination. That is the, regardless of what, uh, the, what is the mark? Regardless of uh, their merit, because um, not the marks which are obtained in this uh, not, are not to be taken into consideration mm. but after permitting them to appear in the main examination if the honorable court finds that they are not suitable uh, not, uh, not no one uh, at that stage would say that no i should be i should have been permitted uh, irrespective not say for example not, that 1000 candidate appears in the main examination and uh, not in the main examination only uh, 80 candidates are selected for appointment but the 20 next meritorious candidates will not be in a position to contend that since 100 vacancies are notified 80 candidates are selected 20 candidates uh, uh, we are the next meritorious 20 candidates we should be considered for appointment uh, the respondent authority can certainly say that this is the standard of efficiency But at that stage, the respondent authority can certainly say that uh, we have determined the minimum cutoff marks considering the standard of efficiency which we require uh, for appointment on the post in question. Uh, at that stage, uh, it cannot be said that it ought to have been 50% or it ought to have been 35%, 20%, etc. But so far as prescription of uh, not this minimum qualifying marks at the stage of elimination test uh, not is concerned. Uh, Lord, ultimately, the purpose which is sought to be achieved would not be opted. Sound, Lord. Or two decisions of the Honorable Court, Lord, state on the point, Lord. Lord, first is 2003-11 SCC 559. For the relevant paragraph, paragraph 7. Lord, this would explain what I am trying to contend before the Honorable Court, Lord. No, head not B. Yes. Paragraph 7, Lord. Hmm. May I read, Lord? Please read. Now, adverting to the point under consideration, it may be observed that so far as the powers and functions of the Commission in shortlisting of the candidates are concerned, there can certainly be no doubt about it. Say, for example, 10,000 candidates apply for recruitment to 100 posts. It would obviously not be possible to take full test, examination and interview of such a large number of applicants, though eligible. 
in that event shortlisting of the candidates by screening out those in respect of whom it would serve no purpose to call them for further test may be excluded by adopting the method of screening test generally speaking a ratio of 3 to 5 candidates for one post is normally accepted depending upon the number of seats therefore for 100 post the selecting uh, body may in the order of merit take out first 500 candidates for further test interview the rest of the candidates would be screened out no candidate excluded by adopting such a method of shortlisting can raise any grievance whatsoever but for such shortlisting as indicated above it is not necessary to fix any minimum qualifying marks any candidate on the top of the list at number 1 down to 500 would obviously constitute the shortlisted zone of consideration for selection for the purpose of elaboration it may be observed that in case some cut off marks are fixed in the name of shortlisting of the candidates and the number of candidates obtaining such minimum marks suppose less than 100 in that event screening test itself will amount to selection by excluding those who do possess the prescribed qualification and are eligible for consideration but they would be out of the field of consideration by result of not crossing the cut off mark as may be fixed by the recruiting body but this is the example exactly not which had happened not in case of the present recruitment process this would uh, not be a short listing in short listing as observed above any number of candidates required in certain proportion of number of vacancies may be short listed in order of merit from serial number 1 up to the number of candidates required in the present case the stand of the appellant commission is that for medical services where the members of service have to deal with health health and life of the people they must have some minimum standard of efficiency and it is the bounden duty of the commission to ensure the same it is perhaps with this view in the mind that the commission fixed 50 and 45% qualifying cut off marks for general category candidates and 40% cut off marks for scheduled caste candidates we feel here we feel here lies the fallacy in the whole reasoning of the commission it is no doubt true that the commission is an independent and autonomous body and has to work without influence of any authority or the government it is rather duty to act independently but at the same time the fact cannot be lost sight of the, of that the state government is competent to lay down the qualification for different posts and frame rules for the purpose or take policy decision which may of course uh, not be a, not be against the law in this context we may refer to the provisions contained in article 320 of the constitution it reads, reads as under i may skip this note then the paragraph 10 note as observed earlier for the purpose of short listing it would not at all be necessary to provide cut off marks any number of given candidates could be taken out from the top of the list up to the number of candidates required in the order of merit for example there may be a situation where more than required number of candidates may obtain marks above the cut off mark say for example out of 10000 if 8000 or 6000 candidates obtain for 45% marks then all of them may have to be called for further test and interview etc it would be in that event not serve the purpose of shortlisting by this method to obtain and give ratio of candidates and the vacancies available for vacancies at least uh, for 100 vacancies at the most 500 candidates need to be called if that is so any candidate who is otherwise eligible up to 500 position whatever may be the percentage above or below the fixed percentage would be eligible to be called for further test thus the purpose of short listing would be achieved without prescribing any cut off marks for lord the honorable court considered both the, both the eventualities lord uh, not eventuality when less than the number of candidates advertised uh, lord are available and lord uh, the honorable supreme court had also envisaged a situation where lord uh, almost all the candidates acquire lord the cut off marks prescribed by the respondent authority then in that case also not all of them will have to be permitted to appear in the examination therefore ultimately in either of the situation i'm not the purpose of uh, not conducting the preliminary examination would not be achieved uh all right 
So this is what you want to say. Yes, sir. Sure. And uh, uh, one more judgment, Lord, mm. on these lines, Lord. Mm. <clears throat> The court says that it it is desirable to so do it, right? Yes, sir. Does it say that it, if not done, then this is in it's puts a question mark against the very process? No, I'm not. Uh, for the purpose of uh, I'm not conducting the preliminary examination is uh, I'm not uh, uh, what is considered so by in, the honourable. Under what circumstances the court should be interfering? Suppose the process has already gone into what I'm is the so far as I'm not. Yes, that process has already gone. I'm not, I will not. Even one can it. understand that there is a mala fight. No, one mala can fight, understand yeah. that if you're pleading that there's something you know which has happened which is questionable. So there, you're absolutely right that if it is to curry favor to some people, or it is for some some reasons that you find that this is so discriminatory, that now it cannot be sustained by the court, then it is understandable. But if the process has already gone into, do you still say that uh, it is? Uh, no, no. But so, so, is so for, for correcting the future course of action, that's please, what you please, are wanting. What had happened, my lord? Uh, lord, when this petition came up for hearing hmm. at the relevant time before the Honorable Court, my lord, hmm. not the Honorable Court, not one of the contention was that not generally the result of the preliminary examination, which is ultimately uh, based on OMR sheets, my lord, was published in a day or two, my lord. Well, here it took a couple of days. Therefore, my lord, one of the contention was to the effect that there might be some uh, technical error. Uh, so far as uh, because uh, not these papers are examined without human interference, my lord. Uh, but the honourable court had also verified it on administrative side as to if there was something wrong uh, technically, my lord, uh, in uh, my lord evaluation of the answer sheets, uh, my lord, it was checked twice or thrice, my lord. So as to ensure uh, that there is no. It's all automatized, right? Yes, yes. It's, it's all automatic. No human intervention at all comes in that. <clears throat> Lord, it was found that there was no error. Lord, uh, in fact, uh, only 86 candidates uh, were eligible for appearing in the main examination. <clears throat> what happened thereafter? Lord, uh, uh, the notice was issued by this honorable court and the matter was posted after the examination. So out of 86, how many of them were selected? So that is section. That is you are aware? You're not aware. Also. Not there. Uh, um, the process had once again begun because you know there were more seats which were vacant. It might have begun. Some of you have been selected. You've not been selected also. That was we, the last we, we did not qualify in the preliminary examination. Therefore, we no, no. Said, but then the process, the next process might might have started soon thereafter. Yes, yes. It might have started soon so after. So, are you are some of you already selected? Not there, and there might be not that I have so not. You're checked. not even aware. <laughs> Lord, uh, and the matter itself has become infectious if you have been selected. No, uh, uh, most of them are not selected. Lord. They are not selected. No, they are even practicing as on date lots. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Twice they have not been able no, to. I'm not, uh, I am not. Uh, sorry, whether they appeared in the next process of recruitment, uh, that I am not aware of. Or they might have chosen not to appear in the next process of selection. Clearing may not be also a mark, you know, of uh, somebody's uh, expertise. I mean, you, you're good at it, but then many a times it may so happen that you may not be in a position to clear. You can, uh, but at the same time, it's so right now, I think it's more academic uh, discussion, right? Yes, yes, Lord. Uh, yes. 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 Lord, uh, what happened thereafter, Lord? <coughs> Why, Lord, the, the direction of the Honorable Supreme Court, Lord? Uh, one of the candidates approved the Honorable Supreme Court since the examination was yet to be conducted. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Lord, you may kindly have a look at the order of notes mm -hmm. of the Honorable Apex Court notes. Which one? State of Punjab? No, no, Lord. Uh, I'm not in this very recruitment process in case of the present petitioners. Okay.
So courts is uh, on uh, administrative side. You can always take. Because, uh, considering the facts of the case, sir, uh, when the number of posts were uh, that were advertised were yes. more than the number of candidates available for the main examination. Mr. Patel, what do you have to say? And Lord, uh, so far as publication of the marks is concerned, Lord, mm. uh, Lord, may kindly envisage a situation, Lord, that if the marks are published. You shall take an instruction as to whether they are now being uh, given or not, because uh, according to us, in one of the other matters or some other candidates, we had an occasion to inquire, and this possibly they now started giving, like as what she is indicating, that you can open your own marks with uh, most of the universities. They do most of the public service commissions. They follow that practice. Possibly that practice has been adopted. She can inquire into that, and can uh, let the court know by two thirty. Let her complete the submissions of hers. Please, please use the use the mic. Please use the mic. The first contention to the honourable court is that in view of Article two hundred and thirty-five, Lord, the High Court had ample powers to frame, Lord, the modalities for selecting the judicial officers. Could I take the honourable court to Article two hundred and thirty-five first? Please go as you desire. Yes, sir. Article two thirty-five of the Constitution of India. We can. Please give our Constitution to us. Please read. Yes, sir. Let me read. Control over subordinate courts. The control over district courts and courts subordinate thereto, including the posting and promotions of and the grant of leave to persons belonging to the judicial service of a state and holding any post inferior to the post of district judge, shall be vested in the High Court. But nothing in this article shall be construed as taking away from any such person any right of appeal uh, which he may have under the law. Uh, re regulating and conditions of his service, or as authorizing the High Court to deal with him, otherwise than in accordance with the conditions of uh, his service prescribed under such law. Now, this article has been interpreted by the Honorable Division Bench of this Honorable Court, Lord, uh, in LPA seven ninety four of two thousand and thirteen. LPA uh, seven ninety four and two thousand of two thousand and two thousand and fourteen two thousand thirteen. I tender the copy of this uh, decision. But I want to cite Thank this you. decision for two purposes. Hmm. For my two contentions. First contention is that under Article two hundred and thirty-five, the High Court has powers to frame rules independent to and contrary to the even recruitment rules as far as present case is concerned my lord it is of 2016 when the recruitment rules which are today in force in uh, which came into force in 2017 were not in force no no they as such in force. Yes, 2017 only the my lord administrative instructions issued by the state of bombay were in force So the not two thousand seven. That is what I am saying. And my lord, the second contention of mine is that having participated in selection process, the petitioner cannot challenge it. So for these two, my lord, propositions of law, I am placing reliance on this decision. Kindly allow me to read from paragraph thirteen of this decision. Yes. Para thirteen related the honourable court to para thirteen of this decision. Please read. Uh, before adverting to the questions framed or mentioned, we should look into the rules for recruitment of candidates. Please use the use the mic. Use the mic. Yes. 
uh, class three and class four uh, services in the district as contained in the government of Bombay Home Department resolution dated so and so we uh, reproduce the same as under. Thereafter, we load the administrative instructions and we load the uh, resolution passed by the state of Bombay is incorporated. Uh, it is reproduced and thereafter the resolution. And on next page, your lordship would find the heading uh, that recruitment rules for recruitment to class three and four services in the subordinate judicial services. Uh, the district judge shall maintain a list of candidates for class three and class four posts in the district and no candidates whose name is not there uh, on the list shall be employed in any civil or criminal court. Now, Lord, these are the uh, rules, uh, recruitment rules, which have been reproduced. Your Lordship would find uh, that till page, internal page 28, the said rules have been reproduced. Thereafter in para 14, a plain reading of the above referred resolution of the then government of Bombay uh, of the year 1957 makes it very clear that they are not statutory rules framed under Article 309 of the Constitution of India, but they are executive instructions issued in exercise of powers under Article, 2, uh, Article 162 of the Constitution of India in consultation with High Court, as is evident that there is a reference of letter dated so and so, dated so and so for, uh, from the Registrar High Court appellate side Bombay. It appears that after bifurcation of Gujarat from the then state of Bombay, the government of Gujarat in its general administrative de uh, department issued a circular which reads as under. So, Lord, it has adopted. I may skip the reading of the circular, but Gujarat, state of Gujarat has adopted it. Um, Lord, para 16, I may read on the next page, page 29. The power to make rules as to the recruitment and conditions of service of the employees of the subordinate courts based in the state government, in the absence of which the government governor may frame rules under Article 309, and, uh, and in the absence of both, administrative or executive instructions can be issued under Article 162 of the Constitution of India. Article 309 of the Constitution of India provides that subject to the provisions of Constitution, acts of the appropriate legislature may regulate and uh, re regulate the recruitment and uh, conditions of the service of the uh, persons appointed to public services and post in the connection with the affairs of the union or of any state. By virtue of proviso, it is competent for the president or such person as he may direct in case uh, of services and post in the connection with the affairs of the union uh, and for the governor of uh, a state or such person as he may direct in case of services and post in connection with affairs of the state to make rules regulating the recruitment and the conditions of service of a person appointed to such services and post until provisions in that behalf is made by or under an act of the appropriate legislature under the um, under this article and any rules so made shall have the effect subject to the provisions of such act. In other words, by the proviso, in absence of complete uh, uh, competent legislature making legislation, it is open to the governor in case of a state to make rules which will have force of law till such time of law is enacted by the competent legislature. In the instant case, we have found that there are no statutory rules framed under Article 309 of the Constitution of India. The uh, uh, posing here for a moment, you know, I may just point out that the recruitment rules on uh, which my learned friend is placing reliance is no, are not you know, the rules framed under Article 309 of the Constitution of India. Yes. No, I may read further. With that, we proceed to consider Article 162 of the Constitution of India. Article 162 sets out that subject to the provisions of Constitution, the executive powers of a state shall extend to the matters with respect to which the legislature of state has power to make laws. In other words, the executive power is coextensive with legislative power and can be exercised if the legislative power has not uh, been exercised. In service law, as is now settled, even if the rules have been framed under Article 300 and nine of the constitution of india it is still open to issue instructions pursuant to uh, article 162 in those matters where rules are silent or not made uh, so you know, the discussion is in respect of you know, uh, the force of article uh, of you know, the administrative instructions 
issued under Article 162 and will not visa uh, visa will not the rules framed under Article 309. Now, as far as will not the discussion in respect of 235 is concerned, your worship would find that on page 32, para 20. That it is above all those the powers flowing from Article 235 are not above uh, the powers under Article 162 and 309. I may read Milut from Para 20. The principal argument of all counsel appearing for the appellants is that the High Court could have issued such administrative instructions or order without first approaching the state government and requesting the state government to. I'm sorry, I missed not. Uh, High Court could not have issued such inst administrative instructions or order without first approaching the state government and requesting the state government to make necessary amendments in resolution dated 26th of December 1957 issued by the Home Department of the, uh, the then government of Bombay. The basis of this argument is that the recruitment rules are to be framed by the government and the High Court has no control so far as the method the manner and the mode of recruitment to class three and four uh, services uh, is concerned. We are not impressed by such submission canvassed on behalf of the appellants. It is true that the power to make rules as to recruitment and condition of service of the employees of subordinate courts waste in the state government. But the overall control so far as the manner, method uh, and mode of appointment is concerned they would definitely remain with the High Court by virtue of power conferred under Article 235 of the Constitution of India. By virtue of Article 235, the control vested in the High Court squarely extends to the presiding officers and also to the functionaries and ministerial staff attached to the district courts and the courts subordinate thereto. Since the controversy resolves around the language of Article 235, it is first step to set down uh, the uh, but, set, but, uh, set down for the purpose of reference. I have already read it, so I can skip that. But I may go to para 21. <laughs> According to Article 235, the control over the district and subordinate courts uh, is vested in the High Court, including the posting and promotion of and the grant of leave uh, to persons belonging to state judicial services and holding a post inferior to that of a district judge. However, the High Court is not authorized to deal with any such person otherwise than in accordance with the condition of service prescribed under uh, the law. Article 235 is not to be construed as taking away from any person any right of appeal which he may have under the law regulating his conditions of service. Article 235 is uh, the pivotal provision. The control vested in the High Court by Article 235 over subordinate judiciary is for the purpose of preserving its independence and its protection from the executive reference. The control vested in the High Court by Article 235 of the Constitution over the judiciary below is uh, below it comprehends a wide variety of matters and is exclusive in nature and comprehensive in extent and effective in operation. You know, th this uh, phrase is uh, in my humble submission very important that the um, Lord, uh, control is exclusive in nature, comprehensive in extent and effective in operation. The High Court is the sole custodian of the control over the subordinate judiciary. The word control in Article 235 is used in a comprehensive sense. It includes general uh, superintendence over the working of the subordinate force. The expression control in 235 also includes the disciplinary uh, control. The terminology used is district courts and the court subordinate thereto and their control has been squarely vested in the High Court. To our mind, this terminology has been used compendious uh, to include within it uh, uh, the pro uh, presiding judge and the functionaries and the staff attached to him. If the intention of the framers of constitution was to confine and restrict the control of the High Court to the presiding officers of the district courts and the other subordinate courts, then such a wide ranging terminology would not have been used. It is settled law that no part of a statute is to be interpreted as merely surplusage or, or to render the substantial portion thereof as uh, otas, except for very compelling reasons. The analogy of Article 229 of the Constitution of India necessarily comes to our mind. In the context of High Court itself, the administrative staff thereof uh, has been uh, put entirely within the power and control of the Chief Justice, including even the power of appointment and dismissal, etc., and the prescription of their conditions uh, of service. As regards the functionaries and the staff of the district courts and the courts subordinate thereto, the constitution did not go uh, that far and instead wasted the control over the same in the High Court or by virtue of Article 235. All right. so, uh, so, 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 in short, you want to say that 235 gives a complete uh, control to the High Court in uh, 
posting, in promoting, in appointing, you know, all this uh, specially. Yes. So for any post inferior to the post of district judge shall be vested in the high court. Yes. So that, that's a com yes, complete yes. control. So the high court is at liberty Lord, to frame the modalities for appointment of the uh, judicial officers, irrespective of Lord, the recruitment rules. Even if they were in existence, in my humble submission, Lord, the recruitment were, uh, rules were not uh, framed under Article 309 of the Constitution. Here, my Lord, the recruitment rules were uh, framed under uh, Article 162. So they were, as, uh, by, by way of a resolution issued by the state of Bombay, they were published. So they were not, my Lord, first of all, the statutory, uh, my Lord, uh, uh, rules uh, under article 309 that is that apart even if my my contention no, is Milo, that rules. even if they were under article 309 the high court has milord powers under article 235 to frame the modalities even contrary to those rules that is my submission now please, in that regard please contrary see, to the rules they cannot I, or I, uh, possibly that is milord the uh, 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 because to, otherwise it, will, it is like giving a huge power to the authority and that can be misused. No authority can have that power. Uh, so the constitution uh, has given the powers even to the high court or to the administration of high court. But you have to follow. You're right. It is, it is a, a completely independent powers for yes. any appointment below the district judge. So district judge and below will have to be with the high court. But it will have to be in accordance with the rules. Modalities, yes, you're right. I mean, it can it can adapt its own modalities. But then, in a in a uh, in a uh, process, there cannot be any uh, either a breach, misuse, or uh, say contravention. Well, of, uh, I, 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 for the present moment, Lord, I accept it. Now, today, my submission before the Honorable Court is that as far as present case is concerned, my Lord, the rules are not the rules framed under Article 309. Therefore, even that aspect would not come to the rescue of the petitioner. The rules are already in place from 2009, right? 2005, Lord. 2005. So these are in exercise of the powers conferred under proviso to Article 309 of the Constitution, read with Article 234 of the Constitution of India. Not <clears throat> so far as examination. Two, 234. I, I stand correct. 309 read with 234. Yes, yes you're is, right. This is under Article And 9, 9th May 2005 yes. are the rules. I stand corrected to that extent. Now my submission still remains is that not. As such, you know, what has been, so uh, the it comes to that that nothing contrary to this could be done. My submission to the honorable court is that nothing contrary to this has been done. Rules provides, my lord, that this this should be the eligibility criteria. Now, how to how to, my lord, uh, select the candidates who are having this eligibility criteria is, my lord, uh, within the domain of high court. The modalities to find out the eligible criteria is not you know, provided by the rules. That is for the High Court to frame under Article 235. There is nothing, there is no you know, provision made in the rules uh, which prohibits the High Court from framing the modalities. Recruitment, uh, uh, this this will fall because it's a civil judge. So one will have to see rule seven. 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 Then the competitive exam for recruitment to the cadre of district judges, right? Yes, so that is for district judges. No, but for I civil judges. Rule eight is substituted by notification dated 23-6-2011. Mm -hmm. uh, that is 
on page 58 58 hmm This provides for percentage as to hmm. how much uh, post should be filled up by promotion. Note, how the next page, page 59, Lord. In the said rules, not paragraph 3. For rule, eight. for rule 8, the following shall be substituted namely, the competitive examination for direct recruitment to the category of district judge or civil judges shall consist of a written examination of not less than two hours of. Uh, <coughs> two hours of duration with 200 maximum marks and uh, why was Where was so the candidates who obtain 50 percent or more marks in the competitive examination conducted for direct recruitment to cadre of district or civil judge shall be eligible for the waiver was the provided candidate belonging to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe obtain 45 percent 45 then relaxation minimum qualifying marks in the waiver is 40 percent merit list to be prepared on the basis of total merit therefore i'm not there is nothing of the sort of preliminary examination which is provided in the rules mm -hmm. and therefore i said Lord, that essentially Lord, it is an elimination test to see to it that a large number of candidates are not required to be examined for the main examination and the viva was so as to reduce the administrative burden on the honorable uh, on the recruitment agency mm -hmm. Uh, could I take the honorable court to so in any any case the rule which has been substituted it says a written examination of not less than two hours 200 marks and five hours this is a necessity yes, the candidate the 50 percent of the marks right where is the screening test for the civil charges no it's not right hmm But it is provided in the advertisement. Page 27. Okay. Page 24 may kind of be same notes. Below the column. So uh, page 24, item number uh, Roman 5 notes. The competitive examination shall comprise of the main examination and uh, viva house test. 24. Hmm. Yes. And Lord, uh, so far as the uh, preliminary examination is concerned, hmm. uh, which is stated to be elimination test in the bracket, the Lordship would find it on page 26. Where does one find? Sorry, Lord. Yes, preliminary examination to be conducted on 29 January 2017. Yes. Page 27, Roman 4 provides the candidate securing a minimum of 50% marks in the preliminary examination shall be declared as eligible for being called for main examination. However, the marks obtained in the preliminary examination shall not be taken into consideration for preparing the final merit list of the candidates. Hmm. All that. Right. Not even in the present recruitment process, not current, hmm. uh, not which is in the offing. But out of 219 posts advertised, because of um, not prescription of this uh, um, not criteria of 50% qualifying marks in the preliminary examination, only 331 candidates are available for appearing in the main examination. Therefore, um, not this process ultimately. How will, many how many uh, candidates had appeared? Uh, that exact that you not aware. Uh, out of 219. Therefore, the basic purpose of um, not this elimination test um, not mm. is being frustrated not. But the uh, Honorable High Court on its administrative side will have to not make this process again and again because uh, not, the sufficient number of candidates uh, are not permitted to appear in the main examination. Uh, Therefore, we would request Ms. Patel to uh, just uh, get the details from the recruitment cell if necessary. Where uh, is it so happening according to uh, Mr. Vyas that every time the preliminary examination has been uh, conducted for the total number of the post advertised 
that you're getting a, a minimum number. You're not even getting the double or three times the candidates. Because uh, as in Malak Mazar's uh, case, uh, Supreme Court, uh, and in other cases also, around 10 times uh, for uh, competitive exams, the written test, and viva was is either three times or five times, depending on the total number of the candidates. So is it that uh, we're not getting sufficient number of the candidates only because the preliminary examination? If that be the case, please uh, let the court know, because he's saying that this is a duplication of work on the part of the administration also. In hmm. fact, at the time of admission, my learned friend was not there was suggested from uh, on the bench uh, that considering uh, not the, the judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court, some uh, modalities are required to be worked out in the recruitment rules as well. Justice Reddy, uh, with, sitting with Justice Pancholi, has uh, referred to the His Lordship Justice uh, yes. Reddy as His Lordship then was. Yes. See the Chatter Singh's case, 97 and 2003. Yes. State of Punjab versus Manjit Singh. That order is very interesting to use this order. Please use the, use the, the mic. Use the mic. This order, in fact, Milord, the, while, while passing this order, Milord, the dishonorable bench had. Uh, uh, discussed the decisions on which the reliance was placed by the petitioner, so mm -hmm. also by the respondents. And it was prima facie found by the Honorable Court that this is not a case in which an interim relief is required to be granted. It, could I read, uh, could I take the Honorable Court to look at that order from para 6? In this case, at least it is to be noted that in the very advertisement issued for filling up uh, vacancies, it is clearly notified that applicants will be shortlisted, uh, so, uh, shortlisted by conducting preliminary uh, elimination test. In the advertisement, it is also notified that candidates who secured 50% marks in screening test only will be eligible to appear in the main written examination. Having subjected to jurisdiction by making applications for recruitment pursuant to such advertisement, Prima facie, we are of the view that after their appearance uh, in the preliminary test, when they have not qualified by securing 50% of marks, it is not open for them to question the eligibility criteria notified in the advertisement. Because you know, nothing contrary to that is provided in the rules, as far as civil judges are concerned. For in any case, it's a, it's a settled law. Once you already yes. entered... And when you are a part of uh, this examination, you cannot then question and challenge it. Yes, that is so. Unless, of course, that's also another uh, aspect. And I think he's fairly saying that is uh, this is recruitment exam. Nothing can be done. So it's just been all over. So, so Milad, as as I have indicated, my first submission was that High Court has powers under Article Two Thirty Five, as I have uh, submitted. Second contention is Milad that once he, once all of them have participated in the recruitment process, now they, they cannot. cannot say that uh, uh, the, the recruitment process was not fair. Thirdly, Milad, the recruitment rules do not provide anything contrary to this. Not, so uh, no, sorry, nothing I'm contrary. I'm, on, I'm sorry. So when nothing, I'm on nothing contrary point. has uh, been done, uh, which is uh, yes. either breaching the uh, yes. recruitment yes. rule. Yes. But that anyway. is my third contention. My second contention uh, to substantiate Milord, my second contention, I place reliance on Milord the, the decisions. Just give me a minute. And of that one. These are the decisions on point that having participated in selection process, the petitioner cannot challenge it. The very first is 2010, the LSC 576. Malik Mazar, you are relying on? I'm sorry. Malik Mazar's judgment, you are relying on? Uh, in a minute.
Chakar Singh is relied on by Mr. Vyas. Yes. Yes, yes. And uh, Manjit Singh also. Yes. It, it, that is also. That. Kandar Kumar uh, Dolakya also, Mr. Vyas is relying on. Yes. And so is Madhya Pradesh Public Service Commission, Naumik Kumar Kotdar. So almost, you know, the, all the decisions hmm. cited by both the sides were... No, that, okay, you're relying on any of this? Yes, you know, this is the bunch on uh, which... These are uh, so, yes. the decisions on which I am placing reliance. Yes, you know, they all are on the point that uh, having participated in selection process, now they cannot challenge it. But the first one is uh, first in the compilation. I may just read so, one. It's a very well. It's a very well set. So I may not. Not when I was reading, uh, not LP seven ninety four. Not mm -hmm. I forgot to not um, point out para forty eight of that decision. Mm -hmm. That again is on uh, this point. It is also not in dispute that most of the appellants pursuant to the advertisement issued by the High Court applied and appeared in the test. In such circumstances, we fail to understand how they can turn around and challenge the recruitment on the ground that the same is ultra-virus. In the aforesaid context, we may refer to the decision of the Supreme Court in case of so-and-so, uh, wherein also a similar stand was taken by the candidate. And uh, in that context, the Supreme Court had declared that the candidate who uh, participated in the selection process cannot challenge the validity of the said selection process after appearing in the said uh, selection process and taking opportunity of being selected uh, para 15 in trailer reads thus he seems to have voluntarily appeared before the committee and take a chance of having favorable recommendation from it having done so it is not open now uh, open uh, to him to turn around and question the constitution of the committee so on that point even this decision helps me do not need to. Yes. All right. Anything yeah. else? One one more thing uh, is required to be kept in mind, Milod, uh, which is that we are not Milod, selecting the clerks or Milod, uh, any other ministerial uh, or administrative staff. We are in search of judicial officers. For Milod, Selection of uh, you know, uh, judicial officers, if the high court expects that the, the candidate should at least secure 50% marks, then that is not you know, against the object which is sought to be achieved by the high court. You know, we expect that at least that much marks, the candidate should at least get that much marks. Who has to decide not the fate of different parties? So this is not Miller in my humble submission, uh, violative of Article 14 as alleged in the petition. So there's no, in short, question. there's no breach. Nothing has happened. Nothing is. Yes, and uh, uh, it is uh, after participating in the process, yes. now they've challenged it. So, just last contention mm -hmm. that even if the Honorable Court is to uh, 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 is satisfied that the uh, minimum qualifying marks were not required to be uh, provided in the advertisement in mm -hmm. such a uh, uh, preliminary test, mm -hmm. even then, since they have participated, you know, at least in this case, it may not be done. On, uh, you know, we can, of course, you know, uh, make amendments to the you know, uh, modalities to be adopted in future by the High Court. But at least, you know, for this selection process, no order should be passed in favor of the petitioner.
All right. That's would you like to give us uh, the detail as yes, to what I, will be it's about uh, uh, some two three uh, last at least five of them which you've conducted so you can just uh, draw us to yes what is the position yes. hmm? you know, we heard you mr uh, only one asked, thing there's in hardly region, anything only, that uh, 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 not only one thing in region i'm not so far as the last contention of my learning friend uh, that uh, not so far as uh, judging of the suitability of the candidate is concerned Lord, uh, uh, when the Honorable High Court is not selecting uh, Lord any Mufasil, uh, um, Lord clerks, etc., uh, Lord, uh, uh, the suitability is required to be taken into consideration. Um, Lord, here lies the error. Um, Lord, that is the basic contention. But this is not uh, um, Lord, uh, a test which is uh, um, Lord, uh, taken for the purpose of judging of the suitability. It's a screening test. Please, Lord. In the affidavit in reply, also, um, Lord, uh, it is contended that uh, uh, elimination test is held not only for shortlisting of the candidate. But also for judging suitability of the candidate. <clears throat> this is for elimination test. You're right. I mean, this is basically a screening test. Yes, and but screening test basic is idea is uh, different than uh, you yes. know when you actually yes. conduct the. If the honourable court uh, uh, would see the last five years figures, I'm not. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, Due to uh, non uh, disclosure of the marks, Lord. She can find out whether, whether the marks are being shared or not. Yes, I have so quite, yes, you can uh, you can just yes, question. I'm not, making, I'm not missing out. The first is that whether uh, every time we are getting sufficient number of candidates or not. Correct. In last, at least in last three to five recruitment process. So suppose Second. whatever the numbers, number of uh, uh, posts that you have advertised. Yes. Uh, as per Malik Mazar's uh, requirement, Malik Mazar says 10 times mm -hmm. the written examination. And when you select from those 10 times, three times or five times will be the uh, for why of us you may be calling so are you actually getting those numbers yes because the screening test is basically meant for that in in uh, uh, written examination uh, descriptive written examination you cannot help it if people that do not clear that is something which you cannot help yes so uh, therefore uh, even if you're not getting a single candidate nothing can be done about it yes but for screening test according to them uh, it's a a weeding out uh, or it's a screening elimination test at first go um, in every this thing you know the more number of candidates are being eliminated yes. and so you're not even getting a sufficient number of the candidates for sitting in the uh, descriptive test yes. so is it happening happening as a regular feature and is it that every time that you, whatever the number of candidates that you advertise, you're not in a position to get so even I mean, call for sufficient. the data. Just I mean, get the data so yes. that, uh, you know, that can be, because these are the two decisions of the Supreme Court he's seeking to rely yes, on to, to say that. So therefore, and secondly, this is by way of a result. Are you actually uh, sending and sharing it with them with the yes. personal uh, password? Yes. Or is it something that they need to ask under the RTI or they need to write every to you separately? So why make it so cumbersome? Yes. Means once everything you opened up, this also can be. Yes. And so we do not know actually what you're doing, you yes. know, every time. So please tell us. And thirdly, Milod, as to how many of 86 have been selected? Uh, any of them have been selected or not? Yes. No, yes, in subsequent, in subsequent exams. See, that he can find out. Yes. Because that's his yes, list. That that, that's really not your worry. Very good. Business. I am obliged. Can we come tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Tomorrow will be. Will you be in a position to get the uh, details by tomorrow? Could it be kept day after? All right, we'll keep day after. Thank We've already concluded hearing, yes. so there's hardly. I just have to uh, mention. Just get them. You know, give it in writing. A short, uh, uh, you know, maybe. No problem. This this is what it is. I mean, maybe it's a kind okay. of a note or uh, through process or if whatever is being shared with you by the department no, you can share it with the court okay. arguments are concluded certain uh, details are sought for
learned uh, standing counsel Ms. Patel requires to submit uh, on 27th uh, matter accordingly for that limited purpose is now posted on 27th. Yeah. Yeah. Number nine, Anawati Kamu, Ms. Jitavala. Let me make sure it's signaled. Who's well signaled? Mr. Jitavala. Perhaps he may not be needed at all. I can delete them as a party respondent. I'm not claiming any relief. They've been made uh, respondents because of the fact that they were there in the original application. And number two, four, and five? I can delete everybody. Yes. If you'll also just have the order for a moment and then. Uh, and uh, Ms. Mr. Rawala is present. They're not there. Mr. Uh, Jaiswal appears. Mr. Jaiswal appears. Comes up for admission, will it? Mm. It's for admission? Yes, please. 2018 matter. That's right, please. The delay just got put on last week. Because very broadly, what has happened is that there is this company, will it? Uh, Urban Liquid, uh, uh, Liquid Gas is Limited. That company went into winding up. Mm. Which we were required to file our claims mm. in our capacity as a distribution company having supplied electricity is we file the claims use the mic please use the mic oh, sorry. we file the claims mm. uh, it's there after uh, it was referred to the uh, chartered accountant that report mm. is at page 33 because if you not just where to have uh, at 36 minutes Mm -hmm. Reasons for not considering the, I'm sorry, 35 minutes. Yes. The names of the parties whose claims dues have been verified by us for the purposes of ranking under 530 RS under. We appear at serial number two. There are two minutes at number two. Uh, so and so, so and so, Harvin guess so and so, so and so. This is what has been considered. And then over the page at 36. 36, right? Yes. It is to be noted that the claim made by Madhya Gujarat, which company limited, uh, is for is uh, 16 crores odd billets and considering statement of affair of so-and-so so-and-so prepared under 454 of the company's act as on so-and-so outstanding unsecured amount in the account of Madhya Kujarat which company is only 8,52,000 for clarification we have sent letter asking for proof of the amount claimed in the proof of affidavit but no reply has been received so therefore only so-and-so but that is 8 lakh is uh, considered as unsecured and eligible amount under 430 and therefore at 37 billets against our claim of was 1.67 what has been awarded is 8.52 because my learned friends are uh, the private respondents are the other parties because i'm making a statement that whatever has been disbursed to them i'm not really agreed by that i am agreed by what has been allotted to me for the purposes of being disbursed so you've been given 8.52 that's right claim allowed that's right and your total was 16 around correct it's 1.67 so, minutes mm. This is 1.67 was on the basis of a decree that was passed in our favor, which your lordship should mm. notice at page 34. Why is the why is it has been said that you've not been given this uh, for what purpose they've reduced it to 50 percent? We don't know, Willis. They've never been able to explain. And I'll just say one thing, Willis. At page 34, your lordship would notice. Willis, I have so everybody must have been given it to 50 percent only. No, Willis, that is not so. Willis. So if your lordship were to have the other ones, they have been given much more bullets. Because many a times uh, they may say that this is the only amount uh, available. So then the really secured creditor may be... State, well, it's the day on which this order came to be passed, they mm -hmm. had about 92 lakhs still available with them. Mm -hmm. For right or wrong reason, well, it's, uh, they now say that about 82 has already been disbursed and it has gone back to the shareholders. Because that would come only and only ah. if every secured creditor Very is true. exhausted. Very true. Now, Melissa, 34 year lordships may just have, and I've also filed the additional uh, page documents. Please. This is a decree that has been passed against the company prior to it being wound up. Well, no, but then is the official liquidity not in a position to say why you've been given the 50%? They say that we never produce the documents. You never produce the documents. That is their say. So, on, say what, on what basis are they saying that 16 uh, uh, or this amount which they have given to you, then what is the basis? Well, but only if your lordships can just have 34 for a moment. Mm, yes. Plus 34, your lordships would notice the amount 3558049. Because mm. that is a decree till amount. Correct. I have a decree. Mm. This decree came to be passed prior to the company having gone into winding up. 
this decree was suffered by the company when it was functioning so the records would always be available with the company and thereafter lives as a necessary corollary with the official liquidator the amount of 167 is because of the interest that has been awarded by the civil court now other than this well as i was not required to produce any documents whatever i may have produced before the civil court there is no legal obligation for me to produce the same thing here because my production of documents have been judicially examined and the civil court has pronounced a decree that decree has attained finality and once there is a judicial order if i give a certified copy of the order sheet to the official liquidator in fact i am not even required to do so because the decree was suffered by the company prior to it being uh, wound up this means the official liquidator was required to accept it now having done that not having done that means there is no basis for ambalal and company to have come to this amount which is just a whimsical amount with great respect to us because other than this i say that i have not produced anything not even the decree sorry not even the decree according to them your claim no, is my claim is based only on the decree so if your claim is based solely on decree why do they say that you would never produce those documents it's they how would otherwise they they arrive at this figure huh? they say my understanding is that according to them i ought to have produced the bills on the basis of which i had filed my civil suit no 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 that's that's unnecessary how do they ask that's them? exactly my submission no, no, no. they can't they simply can't ask they can't ask once there is a decree from the court that's that attains enough. Enough, correct that's enough for them where do where do they say that they don't say that oh, but then the, the then only thing by you making this submission is if your lordship were to have page 36 second paragraph in number 3 for cl uh, clarification we have sent letter asking for proof of the amount claimed in the proof of affidavit <laughs> So what were the needing the certified copy of the decree which you did not produce? Please, if I did not for a moment, please, if I did not produce a certified copy of the decree, please, then the claim should have been zero. There you are also right, absolutely. So, so my submissions are two for one. I was not required to first of all produce anything because mm. the decree was suffered by a company prior to it having been bound up. So the official mm. liquidator, when he inherits the record of the company, will is ought to have noticed this. Without prejudice, I submitted a copy. assuming for a moment that i have only given a uh, uncertified copy or a photocopy but is nonetheless it remains a decree he never calls upon me to say that you please produce a certified copy or that this decree is not so related. according to you in that case you ought not to have granted uh, uh, even 8.52 that's correct either i should have been granted the entire amount the decree to the amount or nothing at all but it's so now, is, is it on a prorata basis somewhere you know this distribution this has been a lot of significance because today the after the auction somebody has purchased the property that person is now making an application in fact has taken out an application saying that you please provide me the electricity connection they are saying that once this amount of 852 is paid to me my right to claim any more money stands exhausted <laughs> and extinguished that is not in our respectful submission that is not correct that is something that we are finding out elsewhere show us the official liquidator's reply please there is this is all that they say to us they took out a report bullets annexing this and that is all that is said to us so this is the report but then what, what do they say of your claim they say that we are only rely on so and so if you lot is better have page 1 mm -hmm. please your lordships would notice at page 6 on the uh, six bottom bullets and then at seven bullets pursuant to the advertisement the official liquidator received various claims from the creditors the official liquidator submits that he appointed ambalal and company for the purpose of verification examination and determination of the claims submitted that mrs ambalal has submitted a verification report a copy of the verification report is the next as per the verification report percentage ratio of distribution is so and so so and so now please it is not 50 50 because at page 8 your notices would notice 13.11 and 86.33 so it is not even as if everybody has been given 50% the chartered accountant has given reasons for not considering the claims and then at page 10 they say that may be pleased to direct the official liquidator to discuss the amount of so and so amount where is details. where is the chartered accountants details chartered accountants details very protest is say that's only 8.52 because of these reasons please that is what the report of the chartered accountant it is to be noted that a claim mind is for this 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 so so that aware that you asking for this amount 1.66 right considering statement of affair of mrs arvin liquid gas 
prepared under 454. Outstanding unsecured amount in the account of uh, Madhya Gujarat, which company is only 8.52. All right. So what they've done is this. This is the reason. Statement of affair and prepared under 454 of the company sector. So that is erroneous then. As on 16th October 1998, the outstanding unsecured amount is this. For clarification, we have sent a letter asking for proof of amount claimed in the form. No reply received within the time specified. This is what they said. That they have sent you the letter. How have they sent you the letter? Claimed in proof of affidavit, but no reply has been received. Mm. Well, our respectful submission is in, in let's look at 454 of the companies act please give us companies act If you notice, for 454-1B, the debts and liabilities for this, it will be a contingent liability subject to the right to file an appeal. If there is a suit pending, at least they ought to have factored that in. Suit was pending. That's right. And you claim you look at it. It was 8.52 that you'd asked for, and then the interest had the no, no, no. I had asked for 35. Hmm. My suit amount is 35. So, 35 so why do this outstanding unsecured amount in the account of uh, Madhya Gujarat, which is only 8.52? If you're not just going to go back to page 34 for a moment. Yes, uh, outstanding due Outstanding 3558 049.12%. That is exactly my suit uh, claim amount. Yes. So, uh, what is the date of uh, winding up? Yes, the date of winding up is 98 minutes. Sixteen ten nineteen ninety eight. 16th? 5, 1998. 5. No, 16th of October. October. The suit date is uh, 20th of October, 97, prior to the winding up order. 20th. Please repeat the suit date. Dawo uh, Raju Tariq is Vis Das Satano. 20th of 97. October, 20, 1997. Hmm. It is taken on record again on 20th of October, 1997. You have the uh, plaint with you? Yes, I have the decree. It's a judgment. No, no, the plaint. Because the decree was not there. When the decree came on which date? There's a decree came on uh, 39, 2005. 30? 30th of September, 2005. Hmm. Because the, uh, the decree records the dawa, the dad, and it reproduces a little bit of the plaint. 
packages pass this on to your logic space. One thing is that one you can do. I've already filed it, Nilesh. It should be on the record as well. By way of additional documents. This is my proof of that. So I have claimed the decretal amount only. Thirty-five fifty-eight zero forty-nine. This report has been prepared by the charter accountant. This has been done on twenty fourth of August two thousand and seventeen. And let's. One more date that would be relevant would be twenty ninth of April two thousand and fifteen. Sorry, twenty ninth of April two thousand and fifteen is when the company court bullets confirms the sale of the asset. So that is for first time when the proceeds come into the hands of the official liquidator for the purposes of disbursement. The decree is prior in point of time. I never claim anything other than the decretal amount. And the interest is awarded by the civil court. Thank you. 
possibly. Let him come and explain because he's given you the share 13.11 percent. While this is, is in what manner and why they've done so, it'll be they alone will be in a position because we only see things which we can see is the report of charter accountant, and the charter accountant says uh, 454. So 454 will need to be interpreted to permit you out of that this 13.11. So not that they're not aware, not that your decree or you're not presenting the papers is the reason for doing this. Is it if what is falling from your lordships is to be accepted for a moment as true and correct uh, as to what they may have done, would your lordships come back to 37 for a moment? Page 37? Yes, please. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Your lordships would notice the amount of Gayatri builders of 6250. Hmm. 34 is the description and the explanation given for allowing that claim. Mm, 86 point page 34 mm. they say that arvind ambalal patel and nainabe narvin kumar patel partners of so and so have claimed 62.50 lakhs with interest at so and so and also provided deed of conveyance and agreement to sale managing director so and so has produced claim of unpaid salary of so and so managing director has also produced a claim for shares of so and so so and so number is these are not decrees <coughs> if i am to be treated at par with all the unsecured creditors i will be standing first in the line because of the fact that i have a decree of a civil court which has been suffered by the company so if everybody were to be given an equal share maybe 50 percent of whatever they have that they were supposed to be getting otherwise then i could have understood but in case if there is any difference in the percentage of the amount being paid or disbursed to the various unsecured creditors, I should be at 100%. Mm. Otherwise, there is no sanctity of a civil court degree. Mm. So, taken and into consideration the, the, the state, statement of affairs of Mrs. Serving Liquid prepared under section 454 that is the only base it has taken and yes. it will it will have to uh, the official liquidator will have to make good this aspect reflected in the order as to how despite being a decree of the court of a civil court they can simply take note of the statement of affair prepared under 454 and grant only 13.11 percent more bizarre is 34 serial number 5 and 37 read together with this you know instead of admitting let us hear it it's, all finally just have a look at this list yes we have seen shock your logic's conscience with this serial number 5 hmm. arvind kumar patel the managing director of so and so that is a company in liquidation has produced claim for shares in the share capital of the company in liquidation aggregating to so and so as against that he has been paid money how can a managing director who's claiming an interest in the share capital must be even treated as an unsecured creditor. He will be the last one. Mm. After every secure. What were you doing for all these years? Sorry? What were you doing for all these years by the time the official liquidator had paid off to everybody? Please, with great respect, please, the matter had gone in cutoff. After it came back, please, uh, the uh, Mr. Shah had been seeking time on the ground that his thing does not have to be disturbed. He made a statement, but then please, he was traveling a uh, couple of times. Uh, they were abroad the last time it was listed. Eventually, it got. Uh, Where is uh, uh, nobody is appearing? Mr. Jaiswal is uh, generally appearing for yes, the official. Yes, we will recollect on the last idea when the mm. minister said, "Please don't." Will you please convey this uh, to Mr. Mr. Jaiswal that uh, two thirty? Let him be here. I have conveyed the. And will not go for any kind of an admission. We'll just straight away hearing this. Yeah. Yeah. A very short point. Yes. It's hardly anything to be further. Yes, otherwise, we would have uh, not taken this further. Well, it's theirs. That is yet another yeah, issue that you lots of to adjudicate while uh, allowing or disposing of my appeal. Let's, now the Honorable Supreme Court has said that merely because I get some money from the company in liquidation, my understanding is that if nobody were to make an application for a new connection, then I will not be entitled to recover any further money than what is given to me by the official liquidator. Hmm. But the minute the auction purchaser decides to come and make an application for a connection or a reconnection, Mm -hmm. In that case, I will be entitled to recover every single area 
for every single penny of the areas from that person minus whatever I have received from here. That is my understanding. Please. Where is that decision? I'll, I'll get that at 230. Please. Allah, just show us that. Please. So earlier the view taken by your lordships was that in case if I've gotten something from the official liquidator, I can't be asking the new purchaser to do it. Nevertheless, in 2020, 21, the Honorable Supreme Court has said that nothing doing. Uh, if the supply court so permits, you have every right. And my supply court does say that. I'll get both the things together. Now, the difficulty that, that arises is that because mm. of the civil court decree, the interest keeps on uh, going up. And up. True. Now, this man, when he comes in, well, he possibly will be paying almost the same amount that he paid for purchasing the land for getting an electricity connection. <laughs> And it is now been recognized to be a statutory due. It can't be waived off. That is exactly what the Honorable Supreme Court says that it cannot be waived off. In fact, there's uh, there's one ch challenge before us in one of the matters where uh, they've been saying that uh, the total amount which has been due outstanding and from Arsil the purchase was made, and uh, they say that uh, if the Arsil has already sold it to us, then you have no business to ask for that. Uh, you know, for this, connecting that view is correct. But now the Honorable Supreme Court says that in view of the amended uh, supply codes across the country, they've interpreted the amended one. They've also referred to the earlier decisions, Isha Marbut, which was the old one, which said that, no, you can't recover it and said that that was in that context. Now, in view of the amendment in the law and an express provision, you have every right. And your watches are quite available. Uh, the official liquidator always sells it on an as is various basis. True. So everything that gets attached to it, all the liabilities remain attached. Show us the Supreme Court I'll decision. Which is the, I'll bring both of you, you remember the names of the parties? I'll just give the citation. Please, please. Please. Two thirty. Uh, it'll be for uh, official liquidator to argue. Somebody from official liquidator to argue at two thirty. We've heard already, Mr. Nanavati. Number 10, Mr. Devar, Devar Shisha, Mr. Jayesh Kishore. Mr. Jayesh Kishore, thank you. Mr. Jayesh has filed a signal, OJPL 1 of 2022. Let the matter be posted for hearing on 10th of August. <coughs> Is that citation would be 2020, volume 4? 2000. 2020, volume 6, SEC 404. Telangana State Southern Power. Page. Page 404. 450. 450. No, 2020, volume 6, Supreme Court cases, page 404. 404. Okay. Just get this. It's 2026 SSC page 404. Yes, please call out the next matter. It's been already adjourned on the 10th. 11th is already adjourned on the 10th August. It's a condemnation of relay. It's been adjourned. Right? And 10th August. We can that is the 10 number. Okay, 11 is nobody has asked. This have wrongly posted it. Please call out 11. She's not there. This is for conversation. Please give us the file. Fifth, over and above the regular mode, let the service be effected through speed post. Fifth of August, direct service so far as the speed post is concerned. Yes, the next. Number 12, Shader, Government Please, now this application for condonation of delay. <coughs> what is the delay? A delay is of 640 days. The 
in fact you know this little peculiar the self same judgment mm. is subject matter of challenge in a group of appeals mm. if the honorable court has page 7 uh, mm. the lead matter was uh, 111 of 2000 appeals came to be filed against the entire group before this honorable court mm. uh, delay was condoned appeal admitted and stay was granted mm. because one uh, appeal or one land reference was not referred to in the judgment but was referred to in the decree so we moved an application before the court seeking modification of the decree to the extent that the judgment the land uh, reference number is not referred to in the uh, judgment but is forming part of the decree so it is an inadvertent typographical error in the proceedings of those applications the opponent produced a certified copy we also have a certified copy which is part of the record of the proceedings hmm. the opponent produced a certified copy wherein in hand the learned judge had included that land reference number hmm. so when that copy was supplied to us we uh, the application which we moved for modification was disposed of and we have filed the present appeal relying upon that because our application for seeking certified copy of that judgment which we filed before the trial court was not entertained as the record and proceedings are before this honorable court mm. so in the self same judgment below the few lordships have uh, page 7 mm. this is the certified copy which was provided to us or uh, at page 31 the honorable court shall find on 7th of may 2018 when this is compared hmm. with the certified copy which was provided to the opponents uh, which is at uh, yes which is at the i'm sorry that can ha page 9 page 72 at 95 yes 72 at 76 i'm sorry yes the honorable court shall find in hand land reference case number 112 of bhr in the certified copy which we had got this endorsement was not there mm. so as a result of that because though the entire group the honorable court has already admitted because this was not part of that group therefore we have now filed the appeal against the judgment before this honorable <clears throat> then what happened did you go and get it clarified before the we moved but mm. that is what if if the honorable court has page 68 hmm we file a substantive application for clarification the relief we sought was at page 69 para mm. 5 by adding details of lar number hmm in the in these proceedings the opponents appeared and provided to us the copy of the judgment at page 72 certified copy of the self same judgment wherein at page 76 and handwritten endorsement is made by the learned judge including the land reference number now this certified copy mm. was uh if the honorable court has page 96 applied for on 13th of march uh and then 13th of march and then tayyar tar 25 6 256 whereas the certified copy which we were provided honorable court will find at page 60 hmm was of 7th of may in which this endorsement is not there so now that we have been given this certified copy we applied to the court that please provide to us a proper certified copy so that we have all the dates but since uh, the entire record and proceedings is with this honorable court our application was not entertained and uh, at page 
नाइंटी So this has caused the delay. This has caused the delay with us. Otherwise, so, or, or, then what is the what is the, the, what delay, is the present position? Present position was here. The appeals are admitted. Stays there. Admitted. The appeals are admitted. Yes. But then yes. what about the clarification? That clarification application is disposed of by the court in view of the opponents producing a certified copy which indicated that land reference case number is included. So. <laughs> <coughs> That hardly is a clarification. It is true, my lord, but that that is uh, in land reference cases we are finding. So once this. a copy is given to the parties, then there can't be any addition. Can't there, be. Not a, it not a word. Be. Not a word. It should not be there. In fact, therefore, our application again we applied for a certified copy so that we should have our own at page ninety-seven, which my lord was not entertained since the record and proceedings are with this honourable. Okay, we can just call for the record and proceeding and see that. But this is not a right now an issue. Yes, it was right now delay because if once delay is controlled, plus it will have to go along with the group. Which court is it? Plus, this is uh, the senior civil judge uh, Jamnagar. Senior civil judge Jamnagar. So entire group was by senior civil judge. State will have any objection? No, my lord. No. Such my lord, the contesting parties would be the private respondent. Okay, we'll issue the. So you will wait. Civil application one two five zero of two thousand twenty two. In first appeal, stem number double three one five of two thousand twenty two. It's a stem number, no? Yes, my lord. The appellant original opponent number three is before this court. You must be hmm, in relation to the twenty-three land reference cases and the award passed by the. A word passed by the collector and enhanced thereafter by the district court. The present application is seeking to condone delay of six forty days, for which the details have been furnished. Rule learned AGP waive service of notice for respond number one. One. One and. And three also, three also. Gujarat three. special and acquisition one, of and one and three. Number two, the Wilson. rule, learned. Uh, the same shall be. Public. Please, ma'am. Over and above the regular mode, service shall be effected through the speed post. I'm obliged. Keeping it written, it will not be shown. Five May, Tarikh, Rat. Fifth August. Let's call out number thirteen, and thereafter the specially fixed matter. Press the thirteen number. This is arising out of order seven rule eleven proceeding. Hmm. The honourable court is of the view that suit is exaggerated. Because I claim for compensation of around fifty crores, so honourable court is of the view that it is always a token compensation, can't be this much. And another is that it is premature. And these two ground, my lord, my order, and by exercising power under order seven to eleven, plaint is rejected. Kindly see, my lord, that part of order. I will also will see page twenty-eight, uh, my lord, before para nine. Last two line, Milord. Hmm. Uh, para twenty eight, Milord. Before para nine starts. Before that, Milord, three line. Chivan ma upasthit thala jagran niyaran mathe. Badi virut tatha 
બિંદુ બેન વિરુદ્ધ આક્ષેપો કરવામાં આવે છે તે ખોટા પુરવાર ના થાય ત્યાં સુધી સદર મુજબ ના આક્ષેપો બધા આક્ષેપકારી હોવાનું કહી ના શકાય હાલના કેસના વાદી દ્વારા કરવામાં આવેલ આક્ષેપો ને ધ્યાનમાં લેવામાં આવે તો તેમને બિંદુ બેન દ્વારા કરવામાં આવેલ કાર્યવાહી સંદર્ભે પ્રતિવાદી દ્વારા આપવામાં જવાબો નિવેદન અનુસંધાને છે નામદાર પ્રિવી કાઉન્સિલ ના સોળસો આપવામાં આવેલા સ્ટેટમેન્ટ આધારિત હોય ત્યાં સુધી તેની તરફેડમાં કાર્યવાહી ના આવે ત્યાં સુધી બદક્ષિણ વળતર મેળવવા માટે દાવો કરવાનો કોઈ અધિકાર નથી અપકૃત્યો માટે નુકસાન વળતર નો કાયદો ઇંગ્લિશ લો તથા અન્ય કેસોમાં પ્રસ્તાવિત થયેલા સિદ્ધાંત આધારિત છે અને આ અંગે નિર્ણય કરવા માટે ઇંગ્લિશ દેશોમાં પ્રસ્તાવિત કરવામાં આવેલા છે દેન મિલોડ હી પ્રોસીડેટ ઇટ ઇઝ અ મેલેશિયસ પ્રોસીડિંગ આઈ એમ નોટ ઓન ધેટ મિલોડ એન્ડ ધેટ રિલેવન્ટ પોર્સન ધેટ ઇટ ઇઝ પ્રી મેચ્યોર ઇફ લોર્ડ સિવિલ સી પે થ્રી ઝીરો બિફોર પેરા ટ્વેલ્વ મિલોડ થ્રી લાઈન તદ ઉપરાંત વાદી દ્વારા તેઓના ચરિત્ર અંગે તેઓની બદનક્ષી પ્રતિવાદી દ્વારામાં કરવામાં આવે છે તે મુજબ વર્ણન કરવામાં આવેલ છે તે વર્ણનને ફરિયાદ ખોટી સાબિત થાય કોઈ સમર્થન મળતું ન હોય આમ ઉપલબ્ધ રીતે વાદીની બદનક્ષી થયો હોવાનું વાદીની દાવા અરજીનું કથન પ્રી મેચ્યોર હોય વાદીનો દાવો બદનક્ષી આધારિત હોય દાવો કરવાનું કોઈ કારણ ઉપસ્થિત થતું નથી એન્ડ ધેન મિલોડ પેજ થ્રી ઝીરો સેમ પેજ લાસ્ટ ટુ લાઈન સોલેશિયમ પ્રકારનું હોય છે તેથી વાદીને સજા કરવા કે વાદીના પૈસા દર બનાવવા માટે આપવામાં આવે તે પ્રકારનું ન હોવું જોઈએ યોગ્ય કેસમાં માત્ર દાખલારૂપ વળતર આપી શકાય હાલના કેસમાં માગવામાં આવેલ વળતર અતિ સરખું ભરેલું છે એન્ડ ધેર ફોર પ્લેન ઇઝ રિજેક્ટ original plaintiff appellant is before this court seeking to question the judgment and decree in judgment and decree passed in special civil suit 399 of 2017 by the principal senior civil judge suran we have the learned advocate mr me mehul sharad shah it can be expedited you know or it can be fixed for hearing if it is going to do that for seven then we can decide to do the urgent notice written a balloon 8th or 10th 8th minute 8th highly obliged to the honor highly the request is it can be taken at 2:30 because it's almost 1:30 and uh, mr suparkar is on his legs he should be here or all right i am obliged to watch is color 2:30 is not here there much like i am obliged Let's call out the next matter. Call out the next matter. Please hold.
Submission is patently vague. Please use the mic. Uh, sorry, I, I, I'll definitely. Sir, in my respectful submission, an order passed by the commercial court in a trademark suit at an interim stage, which is in my respectful submission, patently vague acidly mischievous and an outcome of an abuse of process is a subject matter of challenge before this honorable court in the present appeal. The facts of, in my respectful submission move in a very narrow compass. The appellants number two and three are the owners of a commercial premises situated on SG highway in a complex called Minori Ambit complex. Hmm. All, all right. well, respondents number 225, uh, two, two, well, all are the partners of respondent number one partnership firm, Apple and number one partnership firm, I'm sorry. So, appellants number 225, out of which appellants number 223 are owners of a commercial premises, and all of them are partners of a partnership firm that is appellant number one. Now, originally, appellants number 223, two and three rather, mm. who are owners of the commercial premises in question, were running a restaurant in the name and style of kitchen craft from 2009 till 2012. So this very premises, which is owned by appellants number two and three, was used by them for the purpose of running a restaurant from 2009 to 2012 in the name and style of kitchen craft. And one of the items which was served in this restaurant at the relevant point of time was sizzlers. Well, in 2012, respondent num uh, number one, Yankee Sizzlers Private Limited, mm -hmm. but at that relevant point of time, my lord, it was a sole proprietary concern of one who was instrumental in bringing into existence this company. So in 2012, this very business of running a restaurant, along with the premises in question, was given on leave and license basis, firstly to the concerned person who was instrumental, that is Mr. Abhishek Jain, in bringing to existence this company. And thereafter, this company took over from Mr. Abhishek Jain. So in 2012, a leave and license agreement was entered into by and between the promoter of response number one and appellants number two and three, which the Honorable Court will find on page 27 of the paper book. No use. So, to page 27 is the legal license agreement which was executed in the year 2017 after response number one was formed as a company. Earlier it was with the proprietor. Now, relevant would be this agreement made at um, this 24th August 2017 between Kisor Singh Jala, that is 
एपल एन नंबर टू एंड मिस्टर शक्ति सी के जाला दट इज एपल एन नंबर थ्री हु जॉइंटली ओन अ प्रॉपर्टी हियर एंड आफ्टर रिफर टू इन बोथ ऑफ दम मेजर सो एंड सो सो एंड सो द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी इज गिवन दे टर्म्ड एज अ लाइसेंस द नेक्स्ट पेज मिस्टर अभिषेक के जैन यांकी सिजनर्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड सो एंड सो हियर एंड आफ्टर रिफर टू कॉल द लाइसेंसी which expressions and so and so the licensor is the legal owner now this is very material the licensor is the legal owner and in possession of the commercial place which is situated in the building known as binori mb complex and the number of the office is ground floor four the area of the said space where the restaurant is zani is around 3620 square feet super built up the said restaurant is situated at opposite new york tower behind anusuti beside anusuti tower near so and so so and so so and so further the licensee licensor is the legal owner of all the furniture fixtures equipments etc assets as lying installed in the said premises where the licensor was running restaurant known as kitchen craft the licensee has requested the license to permit him to use and occupy the area with all future and fixtures and other equipments for his restaurant business for 4 years the licensee has further requested the licensor to permit him to run the restaurant under the brand name yankees so the agreement which was entered into in the year 2017 as leave and license agreement clearly admits that this was the premises which belongs to apples number 2 and 3 as owners wherein they were previously running a restaurant in the name of kitchen craft and with existing furniture and fixtures and equipments this has been permitted to be run by apple and number 1 on a leave and license basis now this has got relevance because if we later come to the nature of the prayer sought for in this now this arrangement of leave and license continued till april 2020 in april 2020 according to the appellants because here is the point on which the parties are at variance so in april 2020 according to the appellants the respondent voluntarily vacated the premises by surrendering the possession thereof to respondents number 2 and 3 as against this it is the case of the respondent that the respondent was forcibly thrown out of the premises since there was a provision for an arbitration in the leave and license agreement section 11 application first section 9 application was moved for restoration of the possession then after section 11 application was moved for appointment of the arbitrator by the respondent section 11 application is pending before the honorable court so far no arbitrator has been appointed so for a section 9 application is concerned therein also no order has been passed in favor of the respondent as on the date so and there is a material on the record to prima facie satisfy of course this issue would be relevant in those proceedings whether possession was handed over voluntarily or it was taken forcibly that is not the issue in dispute in the present proceedings but nonetheless if required recourse can be made to the relevant material to show that possession was in fact handed over to respondents number 2 and 3 in the month of april 2000 thereafter from june 2020 
कन्विंस्ड द बिजनेस ऑफ रनिंग अ रेस्टोरेंट फ्रॉम दिस वेरी प्रेमाइसिस विच देवर अर्लियर ऑल्सो एपल नंबर टू एंड थ्री वे डूइंग इट सो दे अगेन स्टार्टेड द बिजनेस ऑफ अ रेस्टोरेंट बट द नेम दिस टाइम वॉज सेजी सिजलर्स rather than the kitchen craft so same furniture same fixtures same equipments where initially kitchen craft was being run then from 2012 onwards till 2020 yanki sizzlers run by the respondent and from june 2020 another restaurant in the name of sezi sizzlers by the present appellants wherein appellants number 225 formed a partnership firm in the name and style of appellant number 1 now feeling aggrieved by the course of action on the part of the appellants in running a restaurant in the name of says this sizzlers and more particularly by asserting that it was by way of infringement of the trademark of you can complete to yes appellant it is infringement of the trademark of the respondent and also an act of passing off hmm. the respondent filed a trademark suit number 882 of 2020 on 5th october 2020 before the commercial court for the city of ahmedabad at city civil court ahmedabad in that proceedings an application for temporary injunction was moved for the purpose of restraining the appellants from offering sizzlers from these very premises on the ground that it would amount to violation of the infringement of or as it would amount to infringement of the trademark of the respondent yanki sizzlers and also by way of a passing off on examining the case on merits the city civil court at amdavad acting as a commercial court declined to grant an injunction against which an appeal from order was preferred by the present respondent which awaits hearing before this honorable court without any interim order in favor of the respondent so far so these are the set of proceedings which the appellant respondent instituted against the present appellants first section 9 for restoration of the position wherein so far no order in favor of the respondent then section 11 application for appointment of the arbitrator there also no order in favor of the respondent so far and thirdly a civil suit for infringement of a trademark and passing off wherein also in my respectful submission on merits he has failed to have any order in his favor and thereafter he files the present suit on 8 march 2021 so first suit was filed on 5th october 2020 the present suit being trademark suit number 8 of 2021 was filed on 8th march 2021 seeking a relief which in my respectful submission would be barred by the provisions of order 2 rule 2 of code of civil procedure in the first instance regardless of the fact that on merits also he has no right to seek that particular relief but my first contention would be that he would not have a right to institute the second suit seeking a relief based on the same cause of action which he could have sought for in the first suit and he Thought it fit not to pay for that. All right. Will hear you uh, at two uh, thirty. We have kept that another matter, yes, which sir. is a uh, badly going on. Uh, 
let's see how it progresses. This will take about a half an hour or so. This Maybe that, that matter. I will take about no, 30 minutes. That another matter which we'll yes, keep it around to 30. Yes, you can forward. just inquire. Yes, ma'am. And then we can continue yes, with sir. this. Watch out. Get from the May I liberty to mention that? May I liberty to mention that? Plus, even nine minutes. Plus, uh, sorry, Mala, sir, uh, was not there. In fact, Mala, here Miss Dabawala is appearing, Mala. The sickly of one person, uh, one council, Mala, Mr. Jaini Lent, uh, therefore, Mala, uh, she was not there at the first time. I'm requesting if it can be kept on 28th Thursday. Uh, she will be here, Mala, uh, because at delay stage, I appeared because uh, my lord, sir, that at uh, at one stage can be over okay. there for my lord, sir. Just let it be kept twenty. Please, please. Oblige, my lord. Serial number twenty nine. Let it be noted in the first five matters. Let it be noted in first five to ten matters. Okay. Yes. Please. Serial number twenty nine and thirty. That will be between my learned friend and myself. Oh, that the bank is considering the proposal which they have submitted in OTS proposal has been submitted. Are you considering? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because it's just needed to verify. It may not so happen well, that are, you know, sir. The bank is considering it as some formalities to be completed. Okay. It is being done. 29 and 30 both. Uh, 29, uh, 13, 47 also. There also. 47. My friend you is can there. say that the parties are attempting the negotiate. Um, parting, parties are negotiating to arrive at an amicable settlement. Therefore, request is made by the learned advocate for the appellant. Joint request. Joint request. The joint request to be posted on how much time? May I request for any date in the month of September so that that so called mini vacation, as we have started calling it. Is a, is let a, it be on 24th of uh, uh, August. No issue. Huh? Finalize it. The bank will not be going on mini vacation. No, no, so bank can consider it. <laughs> in 47 also, the defaulter is different. In 47 also. It's same bank. But okay, so 29th, and, 29th and 38th, you can just uh, uh, one common order. And 47, a separate order. Separate order. Please. 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 Item number 9, if they can just bring the uh, statement of affairs on the next date of hearing. Mr. Sorry? The statement bullets on the 454, so that it can be put in. Place. Yes. Please tell that the uh, official liquidator remains present with uh, the statement and all that. Uh, the controversy is in a very narrow compass. And they have given 13.11% out of the total amount. And uh, the decree was already in place when this amount has been dispersed. So we're just wondering that uh, the taking recourse of 454 of a Companies Act, the uh, say was the, of your charter accountant, that he will be entitled to only this much of amount because in the account of the company this is the amount which has been shown despite there being a valid decree in favor of Madhya Gujarat Beach Company so therefore we are wondering that uh, how would it have a superseding effect right so in, in what 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 makes him write this and why I mean decree of the court has not been considered so you said we have communicated through a letter. They have not responded to it after seeing this. But even if they have not responded, what is the law? Right. And what have you followed? Please follow. And according to uh, what has been shown to us from the record is that even the shareholder has got everything. Now that will come only after the scheduled creditors and the rest also get I have to verify what basis yet. No, he is one of the secured creditors, you know, who is uh, before this court saying that he needs to get the amount. And this is a which company. Please, on what basis we have bifurcated, Madam? Precisely. Uh, you will just need to justify that much only. Please. The rest he has taken us through the papers. Please. 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 Please.
Sorry. Fourteen seventy-seven and one and two. Per court. Per court one and two first will need to be taken up. I'm sorry, I was not here. But but Lordship has indicated this is for grant or refusal of the interim relief. But I would request your Lordship to consider the prayer of CA 1 and 2 of 22. For CA 1, the prayer is to stay the darkhast. But the submission to the Honorable Court is going to be unless there is a stay against the judgment and the decree, question of stay of darkhast would not arise. Now, that application was already filed. That application, the Honorable Court did not pass any order. Honorable Court said there is no urgency matter will come in due course. Therefore, my first submission, I'll answer on merits also. But my first submission to the Honorable Court is, today, there can be no stay against execution of the caste when there is no stay against the operation of the decree. The second preliminary submission to the Honorable Court is, My learned friend has annexed to this application a large number of documents. Please see the annexures to this application. A, B, C, D, and E. But with respect, C, D, and E could not be referred to by my learned friend because it is additional evidence as yet not admitted. And A and B are not exhibited by the trial court. So unless the order of the trial court of not exhibiting is reversed, the same would not form part of the record of the trial court, cannot be referred to at this stage, more so additional evidence. So these are the two preliminary submissions that I have, but I'll be... What about, now, what about A and B? A and B are not permitted to be exhibited. Trial court has not found just... Please see trial court order about B so they're challenging it by way of an appeal, in appeal and, and which is which is yet to be proceeded. adjudicated by your lordships so okay. ah. sorry no b please see in the judgment trial court has said kindly go to Marod. see the what are the a and b and what are a, but a is articles of agreement b is memorandum of understanding now, apropos memorandum of understanding, please go to Barat. It was given tentative exit, exhibit number. But ultimately, the trial court takes a view not to be, not to allow it to yes. be exhibited. It is not proved. So please see. Uh, sorry, I stand slightly corrected. Page 36, para 28, MOU is held not to be proved on preponderance of probability. So if it is not proved, then obviously tentative exhibit number does not really carry us any further. C, D and E are admittedly additional evidences for which application is filed for 
taking them on record that is ca number 2 of 2018 where the honorable court has taken a view to be heard with first appeal c d n e c d n e c d n e but i take take i stand corrected exhibit a may is held to be exhibit ha kya che finding kya my impression is that it is not proved but i will come back to this in a moment so for b is held not to be proved c d and e are additional evidences but f g h and i are court proceedings a third preliminary submission is question of stay would be obviously considered on the basis of prima facie case balance of convenience and irreparable injury my lord not only in this application but even in the earlier application for stay barring claiming that they were prima facie case and stating in a routine manner that balance of convenience is in our favor multiplicity of proceedings what irreparable injury would be caused if they are asked to deposit money under the money decree is not even averred much less explained the application is bereft of any suggestion much less explanation about the other two equally important important ingredients in the matter of stay kind of see the application lot should be see this application ca 1 of 22 paragraph 1 2 are formal paragraph 3 is again formal paragraph 4 is on facts paragraph 5 refers to additional evidence paragraph 6 refers to application for additional evidence paragraph 7 refers to the fact of first appeal where i eight refers to what transpired earlier before the honorable high court appeal is admitted not heard etc para nine refers to darkhast paragraph 10 we would be compelled to deposit the whole amount para 11 this is used for requiring us to settle the matter para 10 i'll i'll tell you para 12 i'll read para 12 that's only thing i'm saying para 12 i was but para 12 and 13 for the sake of brevity defendant repeats and reiterates all the grounds of challenge is pleaded in the memo of appeal it should be it should be appeal and not the defendant or the applicant as if the same form part here of defendant because Uh, defendant shall refer to and rely upon the record of first appeal and ca at the time of hearing of the application the defendant submit it as strong prima facie case on merits likely to succeed in first appeal for the reason more particular stated here in above balance of convenience overwhelmingly weighs in favor of defendant denial of interim leave would lead to multiplicity of proceeding necessary to grant interim leave that's all completely bereft of any particular proper i will now answer as to why on facts no interim relief is required to be granted 
But let's recapitulate the arguments of my learned friend. Broadly, three arguments are canvassed. One, the suit was not of a commercial nature, and therefore the commercial court had no jurisdiction. And as the judgment is given by a court which inherently lacks jurisdiction, it's a nullity. My learned friend also says that we have a right to raise this issue at any point of time. Our participation makes no difference. And As it is a nullity, the judgment is required to be suspended or the award, the decree is required to be suspended. That's the first argument. The second argument is the transaction in question is not a commercial transaction. Second facet of the argument. It is pursuant to a family arrangement between two brothers, which is reduced into writing under an MOU. Under the circumstances, the amount that we have paid to them being a part of MOU could not be recovered back by us and therefore also the stay is required to be granted. Third submission of my learned friend refers to a subsequent civil suit in relation to challenge to the will of one Bhogilal Bachkaniwala and order in appeal by our lordships. Let me start with the third issue first. So that issue is a non-issue. B does not arise out of the proceedings in the matter. C. In the whole proceedings before the trial court or before this honorable court, there is not even a whisper about those proceedings, much less discussion and still much less document being exhibited. My learned friend passed on to your lordships a judgment of our court in relation to the will proceedings. There is no pleading. There is no evidence. There is no issue. There is no discussion of this proceedings either before the trial court or in any proceeding before your lordships. Therefore, attempt on the part of my learned friend to rely upon a document in a first appeal, which is completely foreign to the... No, no. It was not... Uh, at, uh, it was basically the court's queries. Correct. During the course of uh, hearing, yes, um, I think some uh, arguments were made with regard to the probate proceedings. So that is not part of the proceeding. Correct. We do not know as to how the, the arguments had come. And so no. therefore, we had inquired no. as to whether the probate proceedings had terminated what had happened or it culminated into issuance of probate. Sir. And so therefore we said we would like to Correct. see as to what therefore let happened. me say that my learned friend's reliance on the judgment in answer to your lordship's query may not be inappropriate. But to take your lordship to the probate proceedings or to will is completely irrelevant over here. Who has stated a word about this? And I come back to this issue and that's how I will start. Who are the parties in the present proceedings? Please see the cost title. Mm -hmm. Cost title shows Hinson International Private Limited, mm -hmm. a private company, is the plaintiff respondent mm -hmm. and Hinson Engineering. Engineering Private Limited, another private company, is the defendant appellant. The only appellant, only respondent. There is no individual who is a party here. 
the whole attempt on the part of the appellant herein to involve so called family disputes with this money claim is completely an attempt to in our respectful submission confuse the issue because two companies have no family they are not part of huf i take your lawsuit to judgment of bombay high court saying a company cannot be a part of family settlement because family in the family settlement must mean those who are individuals who are related to each other a company cannot be a matter of family settlement but therefore the last issue let us assume that my lords had called upon my learned friend to give that judgment and that is the reason why judgment is given but the whole attempt to refer to those proceedings is completely irrelevant but let me assume will is genuine nothing would turn on it because we don't know what are the terms of the will let us assume will proceedings it is found will is not genuine what how how that proceeding would affect the present proceedings i would respectfully submit that has no bearing whatsoever now let me go to the argument about commercial suit uh, please but apart from the fact that this issue is never raised before the trial court not even raised in the appeal memo and is now being raised for the first time by seeking permission to amend the appeal memo by filing ca number 2 of 22 which is still pending my first submission to the honorable court would be the same cannot be referred to at this stage but let me go to and assume that they have a right to raise that argument therefore let's see what is the commercial cause please go to commercial courts act it was the commercial court act i would request the honorable court to kindly consider two clauses section 21c commercial dispute means a dispute arising out of ordinary transactions of merchants bankers financiers and traders such as those relating to mercantile documents including enforcement and interpretation of such documents must such as those relating to mercantile document is giving an example not an exhaustive clause but i am conscious that some other court has taken a slightly different note but so far as the lawsuits are concerned please consider ordinary transaction of merchants but there is no dispute that both appellant and respondent are merchants and traders it is true that there is no document in question but please also consider independently item 18 agreements for sale of goods or provision of services may it has come on our evidence in our evidence that the defendant appellant used to supply goods to us and that we had given advance for the supply of goods and that advance has to be returned back to us because goods are not supplied to us the dispute would therefore pertain to agreement for sale of goods dispute arising out of agreement for sale of goods but agreement need not be in writing agreement over here does not say in writing in fact the judgment relied upon by my learned friend itself clearly says 
it need not be in writing. But therefore, let us look at the pleadings, whether what I say is borne out or not. Kindly have a look at the convenience compilation filed by my learned friend. Page two, paragraph three. It's plain starts on page one. Amo Vadi Company, Prativadi Company, ne Amara Danda Kia Kamkach Darmian. नीचे मुझे अपनी विगते नीचे जाना रकम प्रतिवादी कंपनी ने टुकड़े टुकड़े आपे हती ये प्रतिवादी कंपनी अमो वादी कंपनी जेते वक्ते जेते ऑर्डर आपे ते ने कीमत पेटे हवेज पेटे गणवानी हती तो वो एडवांस एडवांस अगेंस्ट सप्लाई प्लीज सी पेज थ्री पैरा फोर सदर आपे रकम सामे आ काम ना प्रतिवादी कंपनी है कोई धंधा के व्यापार ना व्यापारो ये प्रतिवादी ये करवानो जनावी ने आ दावा में दर्शा विल रकम हो वादी कंपनी पास दी मेरे वेली ची तैना अनुसंधान ने प्रतिवादी कंपनी है कोई धंधा के व्यापार नहीं करता निधेरी रकम परत वसूल नहीं आता ऊपर Therefore, we are given advanced against supply of goods. Supply is not having been affected. The money became due and payable back to us as a result of which this document becomes, this suit becomes suit for recovery of goods or dispute pertains to purchase or sale of goods. Sir, the DW1, the managing director or Darshan Bachkaniwala, please go to page 61 of his affidavit, accepts That in past they had supplied the goods. Page 61, paragraph 38. Evat Kari Cheke Nishani thus ek para agreement pan number Pachna clause number Chani Jugu Mujab Kamlesh Bene Jare Jare DDY component and assembly in Jaruyat Upasitai Tare Teredene A material Purukar partner supply the reke who. It is Darshan by preferential supplier, it is like Agramta Karna Vikrita Rishu. Maru Kevu H. A. K. May add DDY component and assembly. Kamlesh bin a coat supply appel auto. Tiar Pachi appel nati. Sorry. So this is? This deposition is by DW1. DW1. Kamlesh B happens to be uh, PW1. My client's director. Hmm. Submission to the Honorable Court is till this issue is adjudicated and reversed. Today, to take a view that this is not a commercial suit because, oh, defendant has now realized it is not a commercial suit, would not be correct. There is no pleading to that effect, there is no evidence led to that effect, there is no 
finding to that effect. We did not lead further evidence for the simple reason they never disputed it. But this is an accepted position. My contention of the plaint is very clear. But this could not be a ground to state the decree. I take your lot to the law on the point that something which needs to be investigated at a future date on the basis of evidence that may be led or that might have been led would not give them any right to claim that judgment needs to be therefore suspended. Across Mr. Sapaka, please turn to page 63. Brother Justice Achek points out to us uh, that uh, this page 63 is in uh, answer. This is a compilation page 63. Convenient compilation. Yes. And that's in an, uh, in an answer to the query uh, in the cross examination. Okay. That uh, she had read, and then that's how uh, we had asked for it. So, correct, correct. Therefore, let me, let, let me put it this way. query but then on the verse but then he yes while reading this is me. yes you're right sir absolutely right therefore dw1 says that in relation to wasiyat nama in relation to will suit is pending but that's a suit between the brothers plaintiff company and defendant company are not parties to the suit. In relation to commercial cause, I have already made submission that this is pursuant to the goods supplied, goods to be supplied, advance given, and it was not as if the parties were strangers to each other. DW1 accepts. Therefore, my respectful submission that argument that this being a not a commercial cause, commercial court inherently lacks jurisdiction, and that is the reason why the judgment is nullity, is not an argument which requires acceptance, much less acceptance at this stage. Number jurisdiction of the court will be decided on the basis of contents of the plaint. <coughs> Suppose it is found that I am unable to prove contents of the plaint, court might take a view, I have no jurisdiction. But today, it cannot be suggested that the court inherently lacked jurisdiction.
that takes me to the second contention of my learned friend, the major contention that amount was paid under an MOU. And, and because the amount is paid under an MOU, uh, the plaintiff has no right to file a suit because the amount is not required to be repaid. Two broad submissions here. First, MOU is held not proved. Please go to the trial court's reasons. Please go to the trial court order. But the discussion on MOU starts. on page number 32, para 27. There is no dispute about the fact that plaintiff company has advanced the amount to the defendant company. Now the question arises whether the plaintiff company has paid the said amount to defendant company in accordance with MOU at Exhibit 70. Please continue. Look at that. Yes. There is no dispute about the fact that plaintiff company has advanced the amount to defendant company. Now the question arises whether the plaintiff company has paid the said amount to the defendant company in accordance with MOU Exhibit 70. Said MOU was disputed by the plaintiff and exhibit to the said MOU was given subject to genuineness of the MOU. Defendant has examined Shailesh Thakkar DW2 at Exhibit 68, Pankaj Savalya DW3 at Exhibit 69 to prove the said MOU. It is to be noted there is a material contradictions regarding execution of MOU and MOUs under the shadow of doubt. Let me first deal with the genuineness of the MOU in the light of oral testimonies of the defendant's witnesses and documentary evidences on record. Genuineness of the MOU is discussed under the following point. But there are four points and four independent reasons why the trial court says MOU is not believable and therefore I will not rely on the same. First, date of execution. It is a case of defendant company throughout the pleading in the written statement and affidavit of DW1 that the said MOU was executed on 1st July 2006. Our perusal of the stamp paper shows that the stamp paper was purchased on 28-8-2006 then it would be impossible to execute the said MOU on 1st July 2006. Therefore, date of execution of MOU of 1st July 2006 is under a shadow of doubt. If you also would like to see that document, my learned friend has, though it is, as I had said, it could not have been referred to, please see page 20 of the CA. Or we can go to convenience compilation. But convenience compilation, page 24. Please see the date. Stamp paper is of 28-8-2006. Please go to page 24. Not sure, but so the trial court says it could not have been executed on 10th July because stamp paper is of 28-8-2006. Let's look at the next issue raised by the trial court. Purchase of stamp paper. In the cross exams of DW1 has admitted stamp paper was purchased by lawyer Sanjay Kapadia. Our perusal stamp paper, it appears it was not purchased by lawyer. It was purchased by some Dashatral Jariwala. Therefore, the version of DW1 is falsified on this aspect. It was suggested, but then Dashrath Bhai could be the man of Sanjay Bhai. 
but nobody has made that suggestion to nobody has got this clarified in re-examination. Please go to third signing of MOU. In the pleading and affidavit of DW1, it is the case of defendant company that MOU was executed on 1st July 2006. But in the cross examination, DW1 could not explain when the MOU was signed. Rather, he admitted MOU was not signed on 1st July 2006. Fourth, custody of MOU. The defendant tried unsuccessfully to prove on record at the fag end of the trial, the MO is in the custody of the director of plaintiff company. Initially, it was the case of defendant that the MO was the joint custody of Bogilal, father and director of the plaintiff and defendant company, Shailesh Thakkar. Therefore, defendant moved an application to summon Mr. Thakkar to bring original. But in the deposition, Mr. Thakkar deposed that the same MO was in the locker of the bank. But rainy waters entered into the bank. Therefore, said MOU was taken out in the month of August 2006. Therefore, it was kept in his custody. Thereafter, on the occasion of marriage of Darshan Bhai, it was handed over to Kamlesh Bhai Lachkaniwala in the presence of elders. He also admitted this fact was also known to other family members. If it is so, the said fact was known to Darshan Bhai, then why on behalf of defendant company, Darshan Bhai moved application to summon the witness? But how I am clear? DW defendant company says the custody is with Shailesh B. So we call upon Shailesh B to remain present. Shailesh B came and said, It is now not with me. I have handed over in presence of all the parties to the plaintiff. So obviously, the defendant, Darshan, knew about it. Then why would Darshan call upon Shailesh Thakkar to produce it? But I hope the chain of custody is completely a matter of confusion. In fact, went to an extent of saying that there was a previous day was the marriage and, you know, he, he pressurized and that was the reason he has given, you know. So that, that has been all read in, in so detail before this Now, I am for the timing only highlighting this issue on the principle of, because when I go to the judgments, I would be submitting to the Honorable Court. The law appears to be that unless... Lordship's conscience is shocked unless a Lordship finds that the order is so perverse. It cannot stand scrutiny even for a minute. The stay is not required to be granted. All issues which are required to be argued will have to be argued at appropriate time. They cannot be argued and because there are issues to be argued, you stay the judgment because in every matter, some or other issue would always be apparently arguable at the first blush. Then the Honorable Court will, on the basis of all evidence, take a view whether to accept or not. That is no ground to stay the judgment. Therefore, not the trial court finds this for these four reasons, MOU is not believable and therefore gives a finding, page 36, para 28, MOU is not proved even on the preponderance of probability. Page 36, para 28, fourth line. Therefore, in the light of opposite discussion, the version of the defendant plaintiff has, company has given money in the defendant in accordance with the MOU dated 1st July 2000. It's not proved even on the preponderance of probability. But there is one more reason, an equally important reason. Please mark two dates, 1st July 2006 and 22nd August 2006. First is the so-called date of signing of MOU. Second is the date of stamp paper. It could not have been signed before 22nd August. Amount which I am seeking to be returned for which I am seeking decree is given in four tranches. And all tranches were complete before 22nd August. Not a rupee is made after 22nd August. Please see the plate. The amount is paid in four tranches. Page 2. 1st July 2006. 1st July 2006. 21st April 2006. 4th July 2006. Convenience comparison. Page 2.
page two, para three, Lord Shiva, four tranches. Not one tranche is after twenty second August. Would M O U then not record that so much amount is already paid? Then M O U cannot be in future. Oh, these are historical facts. But you see, one payment is in fact prior to even first July two thousand six, twenty first April two thousand six. Even according to defendant, the M O U was signed on first July two thousand six. How would they justify the transaction of first twenty first April two thousand six? In any case, all the four transactions are before twenty second August two thousand six. The date of M O U. Therefore, the whole theory of M O U. And my M O U nowhere refers to any amount to be paid. Even if let us let us assume we can read that. Please see M O U page twenty four. There is no amount which under the MOU, Kamlesh Bhai had to pay to Darshan Bhai. In any case, it would have been their personal obligation, but even that amount is not there.
but therefore the whole argument that there was an mou and the amount is paid under the mou is held to be unbelievable and is held to be unbelievable for valid reasons if mou is executed on 1st july then the amount one payment is unexplained if the mou is executed on 22nd august then all the four payments are unexplained and obviously it is not executed before 22nd august because the stamp paper is of 22nd august and now darshan bhai says it was signed on 22nd august though it is his case otherwise in pleading 1st july he vacillates it is signed on 22nd august then sir why does the transaction not get reflected over there is no answer apart from the fact that we are really looking at the liabilities and assets of the company in question therefore now let me independently prove that the amount was due and payable by the defendant company now please have a look at for my learned friend has placed on the record only one balance sheet please have a look at page 109 for the year for the financial year 67 for convenience comparison page 109 मलोट मलोट प्रोबेबली माय लर्न रिफ्रेंड ऑट टू हैव प्लेस्ड ऑन द रिकॉर्ड इवन इन कन्वीनियंस कंपाइलेशन ऑडिटेड अकाउंट्स राइट अप टू थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च फिफ्टीन और माय फ्रेंड इज प्लेस्ड ऑन द रिकॉर्ड ओनली फॉर द इयर सिक्स सेवन So it's, it's by way of a separate paper book which is big. Oh, okay. Uh, can I request your lordship to take up that paper book? Yes, yes. Then thank you. Or for the timing, lordship, may I have a look at six seven? Then I take your lordship to others. Please have a look at page hundred and nine. This is accounts for the year six seven. Page hundred and ten is the auditor's report. Please see page hundred and ten, Roman two. In our opinion, proper books of accounts as required by law have been kept by the company so far as it appears from our examination of books. Now, please go to page hundred and six. Hundred and sixty. What should I put? Hundred and sixty. Please look at the second item: loan funds, unsecured loans, rupees eleven crore four lakh ten thousand three ninety four. This is the amount of loan borrowed by this company. This is the balance sheet of the defendant company. What should I put? That figure. Please go to page one one seven. The breakup. Unsecured loan from Himson International Private Limited, ten crore seventy five lakh of rupees. Page one one seven bottom unsecured loan, ten crore seventy five lakh of rupees. My suit is for the recovery of this sum of money, duly acknowledged as debt. By the defendant company in its balance sheet, duly signed by the directors of the company. Please go back to page one one six. Complete page six. Thanks. Complete page six. Darshan, Darshan, and Bogilal both have signed the balance sheet. Now, please also see one note, page one twenty one, notes to accounts start, 
and page 122 roman 2 notes on accounts item 6 the balance of unsecured loan sundry creditors sundry debtors and loan advances are subject to confirmation however the management has certified the respective balances and now the management seeks to claim oh this is not the amount payable by us at all this is under the mo in page 124 this is signed by both chartered accountants and the management including bogila and kamlesh both so there is an acknowledgement of liability in the balance sheet company acknowledges as the amount due and payable by it the argument is no but this is not correct this is not the amount repayable by the company this is the amount which kamlesh had to individually pay darshan so kamlesh paid to darshan sorry kamlesh paid to darshan individually with darshan not being obliged to return why would company show it as a liability and this is not for this year this is for years together including for the years post filing of the suit or please lot of has that bigger bunch Uh, running into eight hundred and forty pages. My lords, may I just have a look at the index. Lordship has index. Please have a look at index first, so that I may not have trouble here. Lordship, please see item number seventeen onwards. Accounts for six seven, which I took your lordship to seven eight eight nine nine ten. But the suit is filed in the year two thousand and nine. Ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, and fourteen, fifteen. Well, let me take your lordship to a balance sheet after the suit is filed, where this is acknowledged. Please have a look at page three twenty three. Or should I go three twenty three? This is after the suit is filed. Lordship would find page three twenty four identical auditor's report. Then Lordship would find page three thirty the balance sheet. And. Second, I the unsecured loan of rupees eleven point zero four crore. So she got that, and paid three thirty one at the bottom from group companies rupees ten point seventy five crore.
that. It's scary. But this has continued right up to 14, 15. Please go to page six, double five. That will be difficult because it is not in the columnar form. It's not in dispute, my lord, that the liability is continued through and through. In fact, Darshan Bhai admitted that in his cross-examination. Please go to the cross-examination very briefly. Page 51. The convenience compilation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Relevant on page 60. Para 32. Evat Kari Cheke Ak Satavan Kijamu Pratuari Kamina, Isabi were Satana was not audited Isaboche. The man secured Luna heading the Vadi Kamni, Insan International Repair, thus called Panchuka Lakata Velache. Or she got that sentence. Now please go to straight, straight to page sixty. Oh, but there is some, but I'm sorry, the same paragraph, the same continue in my copy, but one page is taken back and forth. I don't know whether in my Lord's copy, but next para, next page starts with para 36 or para 33. Therefore, sir, I'll read this page and request your Lordship to jump one page. I'll read this. Temaj A is abma rupya so and so complete Pachkaria Jama Dekaje Evat Karijek Ak Atavanti. Please keep one page Ak Pasar Sudina Bejar Ant now, now thus, thus a year, a year bar, bar tear, tear chowd, chowd pandarna, wash matena, Amo Prativadi Kamdina, audited annual accounts, Utara Rajuka Reche, the Darekma. Darek Vashma, Rupa thus called Panchota Lak, Vadi Company, Prativadi Company, Apple, unsecured loan, Tarike, Vadi Company, Ma, Jama, Darshama, Avelche. What else is required? Right up to 14, 15, they are acknowledging the amount as due and payable to me. But if the whole theory of family arrangement is right, not a rupee would be shown as repayable to me. Let me assume that they were under a mistaken belief. Then once the suit is filed, they would have corrected it. After filing of the suit, they have continued for five years. So therefore, the argument that this is not the amount repayable by us at all. This is not amount repayable by us at all. And this is the lab, this is the amount paid under a family settlement is completely, in my respectful submission, misconceived. Now let me deal with the judgments. Or let me first deal with my judgment and then I'll take your lordship too. The judgment cited by my learned friend. Hmm. 
Sir, I'm sorry, it is not serially paid, but the Abish is flat. The first is the recent division and judgment of our court, where So please keep the first judgment, division and judgment of our court, where money decree pursuant to arbitrator's award was sought to be stayed. I'll skip a lot the arguments. My arguments begin from para four. Serious grievance was made as regards validity of the award. I'll ignore all those arguments. Please go to page six, para six. Our argument is a money decree cannot be stayed. Finding of the Honorable High Court starts on page 8, para 8. But I'll request the Honorable Court to go to page 12, para 9.1. Considering the observations made by the learned arbitrator as well as learned judge in the impugned judgment and order, it cannot be said that the case on hand is an exceptional one case. Contentions which are raised by Mr. Joshi, the net senior advocate for the applicant, are straight away on merits of the award, which would require further and detailed scrutiny. On face of it, it cannot be said that the impugned award as well as judgment of the trial court is in any way irrational or apparently illegal. Even applying principle of order 40 and rule 5 of the CPC, the award in terms of money being a money degree cannot be stayed without deposit of the said amount. I'm relying on this observation. On facts of this case, we do not find that the conclusion arrived by the learned arbitrators as put below are patently illegal and such that shocks the conscience of the court. The contentions which are raised even before us are on facts is observed here in above, which are to be examined at the final hearing which are so and so consider provision of so and so is also order, order for the rule 5 of the CPC. We do not find it a fit case to exercise discretion and grant stay without deposit. You are the alternate supplement, then all those arguments are rejected. So on the, this honorable court required full deposit to be made. This was carried in SLP before the honorable Apex court. Not only honorable Apex court dismisses SLP holds that other side would be entitled to withdraw money 50% against security and 50% will remain deposited. Please see the, sorry. Please go to the third judgment. Again, division and judgment of our court. Now, please see page three. Large number of judgments were cited in support of unconditional stay or stay. Other side refers to page five, para 5.1, Malva strips, order 41, rule five. 
Now please see the finding. Page seven, para six finding starts. Having heard learned advocate for the respective parties and having considered the material record, the court finds is under. Not sure, page seven, para six. It is not in dispute that judgment and decree under challenge in appeal is a money decree. Further, it arises from a summary suit. While considering a question whether the judgment and decree arising from a money decree and debt to from a summary suit should, should be stayed or not, and if yes, on what condition, which parameters should be kept in mind, you can be traced in the decision of Supreme Court in the case of Malwa reported in so and so. Relevant para, para of this judgment read as under. I am reading it because I will not have to read Malwa. I also put Malwa over here. Uh, the High Court in this case failed to notice the provision of sub rule 3 of rule 1 of order 41. Appellate Court indisputably has the discretion to direct deposit of such amount as it thinks fit, although the declaratory amount has not been deposited in its entirety by the judgment date at the time of filing of appeal. But while granting stay of the ex execution of decree, it must take into consideration facts and circumstances of the case before it. It is not to act arbitrarily either way. If a stay is granted, sufficient cost must be shown which means that the materials on record are required to be perused and reasons are to be assigned. Such reasons should be cogent and adequate. High Court with respect failed to notice that suit was under Order 37 of the Court, whether it was maintainable or not, may fail for, for considering in the appeal. More kindly, Mark, same issue would arise, whether it's maintainable as a commercial court or not, would, would come up for consideration in appeal. Even assuming the same was not maintainable, question which should have been posed by the High Court was as to whether sufficient cause has been made out to reverse the decree passed in his favor appellant. Even a decree could have been passed having regard to defense raised by the respondent under order rule 6. We therefore see no justification at all as to why an order of stay of nature was passed by the High Court. Even if the provision is not mandatory, purpose for which such a provision has been inserted should be taken into consideration. An exceptional case has to be made out for stay of execution of a money decree. <coughs> But therefore, my respect for seven, what is the exception case here except for the bogey of family settlement, which flies in the face of their own balance sheet? Number, what is the evidentiary value of balance sheet? Please go to the next judgment. A recent Supreme Court judgment on the evidentiary value of the balance sheet. Now, please go to Page 385, para 14 of 2021, 6 SCC 366. Lord Shikharpur, 2021. Please go to para 3, page 385, para 14. Now, the discussion of balance sheet is page. 386 para 16. The next question that this court must address is as to whether an entry made in a balance sheet of a corporate debtor would amount to an acknowledgement of liability under section 18 of the Limitation Act. Several judgments of this court have indicated an entry made in the books of account, including balance sheet, can amount to an acknowledgement of liability within the meaning of section 18 of the Limitation Act. So what else is required? This is the acknowledgement of liability. Right from 6, 7 till 14, 15, the liability was acknowledged. But the whole discussion, I'm not taking a loss to the series of judgments discussed by the Honorable Supreme Court that on the basis of balance sheet, decree can be passed. But the discussion continues. And the court has taken a view unless it is qualified and but the, in the present case, it is not a qualified balance sheet. But please see para 29 on page 394 companies act. The whole discussion goes on. The companies act is discussed. Page 397 para 33 obligation to maintain account is mentioned. Thank you. 
but trial court has more refer to a few judgment which were then in then available a plc page 405 placitum d large number of judgments of supreme court are referred to acknowledgement is taken as good enough for the purpose of fastening the company with the liability but i am not troubling a lot with the pages and pages but that is what the supreme court has taken a view it's liability but therefore i put a question to myself what is the case that they have pleaded family settlement for which mou is a not found to be believable there are inconsistencies trial court has found it is not it cannot be relied our case is you are yourself acknowledging liability year after year including years after the suit was filed. and if this is the acknowledgement of liability it's good enough for the purpose of drawing decree what is their answer there is no answer whatsoever but if i had if not i if kamlesh bhai had to individually give money to darshan and let us say the check is issued in the name of the defendant company it would have been credited to the account of darshan money is brought in by darshan why would it be given credit to the plaintiff company and that too as a loan but the next is malwa which i already referred to earlier the next judgment is order 40 and rule 5 and malwa and other our high court judgments are good enough but therefore my respectful submission is no cases made out what serve for stay now let me take 5 minutes to deal with the judgments cited by my learned friend but my learned friend has cited seven judgments Lot of the seven judgments of my learned. But let me start. My lords have got one of one. Sequentially arranged, and I'll go sequentially. Very large. Six. Two thousand fifteen. Six instances. My friend cited 2015-16 SCC 631, paragraph 28 to 31. But that's on facts as to how the business was settled between the brothers under a family settlement. But here, not neither. Kamlesh nor Darshan are parties to the suit. We are dealing with a company. As the Bombay High Court takes a view, a company cannot be a party to a family settlement. Please have a look at three ninety seven ITR six one six. Please have a look at para nine. We have considered the rival submission. There is no dispute before us that family arrangement settlement would not amount to transfer. In fact, 
all the three authorities in the act have not disputed opposite position of law so far as members of mohta family are concerned who are parties to the family settlement any transfer interest between them on account of family settlement would not result in transfer so as to provision of capital gain tax in the act however in present case we are not concerned with the members of mohta family who are parties to the family settlement but the transfer of shares done by the company incorporated under the companies act having separate independent corporate existence perpetual succession and common seal these companies independent of and distinct from its members in fact the principle dates back to the decision of house of lords in solomon versus solomon i'll skip that however the courts have permitted lifting of corporate to veil to prevent injustice one such class of cases where the court has disregarded the corporate entity in where it is used for tax evasion classic illustration of this is found in the incho incho where the court lifted the corporate veil as it is found that company in this case was formed by the ssc purely and simply as a means of avoiding super tax company was nothing more than the ssc itself it did no business but was created purely and simply as a legal entity to to ostensibly receive dividend and interest and handed over to the ssc as pretended loan in the present case revenue does not seek to lift the corporate veil it is not the case of revenue that the corporate entity is a sham and has been formed to circumvent the law in this case it is the ssc which seeks to lift the corporate veil so as to identify members of the ssc company as those who entered into family settlement as reflected in arbitration awarded at so and so call upon authority to ignore the corporate existence of the appellant lifting of corporate veil is not allowed when it is not for the benefit of revenue apex court in bacha gazdar has internally observed shareholder has an interest in the company it only has a right to participate in the profits of the company as and when company decides to divide them the company is a juristic person is distinct from its shareholders it is the company which owns the property and not the shareholders therefore the attempt of the shareholder to lift the corporate veil at the instance of shareholder was rejected in this case also shares of so and so and so and so are held by apple and ssc not its members therefore members therefore cannot claim any right to the property apple and company shares in so and so, so, and so. but then Uh, the learned counsel for this mr so and so the entire transaction should be viewed holistically bearing in mind the purpose and object of settlement as recorded in the arbitration award so as to settle the dispute with members of family it was to achieve a further object is that the shares of the company were directly transferred objective purpose of family settlement would restrict itself only to the persons who entered into family settlement and part of the settlement it cannot extend to the persons who are strangers to the settlement in this case admitted the appellant ssc is not a member of family so as to be part of family settlement the this judgment is irrelevant the next judgment cited by my learned friend 2019 ssc online daily 994 deals with what is a commercial suit and it deals with section 21c of the commercial courts act and says it is not in relation to mercantile document but i would respectfully submit with respect delhi high court has fell into error in restricting 21c only to commercial document in any case i have an alternate contention of not only 21c but also 21c1 but also 21c 18 to which i made a reference Clutch got that? So please go to the next judgment. Uh, 2022 SCC Online Daily 1058. But this judgment, in fact, partly supports my case. Please go to para 15, where it says agreement did not be in writing. Para 15 last sentence. A written agreement is not necessary, and an oral agreement between the parties would suffice. 
but the court held this is not a commercial dispute because what was the controversy but a brother filed suit against his bhabhi and nephew on the ground that the defendant created a show of entering into an agreement to sell took possession of the property agreement never took place and they have taken over my property therefore written my property the court takes a view this is not a case of breach of an agreement already made it's a case of non agreement so it's not a dispute arising out of agreement it's a dispute arising because there was no agreement please see that particular finding uh kindly go to page para 17 later second part i read para 17 in it, it it cannot in my considered opinion be held that a dispute in the suit arises out of an agreement between the parties relating to the suit property case made out in the suit is that agreement would have been entered into had the respondent not usurped the title deed of the property from the petitioner's father no such agreement having either oral or written therefore even executed in the parties in fact the grievance of the petition the plaint is that owing to alleged subterfuge committed by the respondent such an agreement Could never fructify. But therefore, para nineteen, there was no such agreement, and therefore, this is not a commercial dispute. The next judgment cited by my learned friend, two thousand twenty-one, SCC Online, Bombay, five zero three two. The friendly loan given, which is not a commercial loan, the High Court says. Is not a commercial dispute. But it's no one's case here. It, well, it's not our case. It's a, it was a friendly loan. It's not even their case. It's a friendly loan. A police is their cases. This is not to be returned because it is given to us under a family settlement. How would friendly loan judgment would at all be useful? Our case is a commercial transaction. In consideration of business relationship between the parties against the goods to be supplied, we are given the money. Therefore, the friendly loan or hand loan concept is completely irrelevant in the present setting i hope i'm clear the next judgment cited by my learned friend is uh 2011 11 scc 198 supreme court judgment para 20 to 25 a short proposition is made that if a decree is nullity the issue can be raised even at this stage but well, i am not disputing that proposition i am saying but for the purpose of order 41 rule 5 it may not be relevant or should please please recall malwa in malwa the argument was this is not a commercial suit and therefore the court would have no jurisdiction the honorable supreme court that is not relevant at the stage of order 41 rule 5 that we tried at the appropriate stage would you also like to see that particular fine yes but therefore i am entitled to raise does not mean that it is being raised and it is being accepted and therefore decree is being reversed and therefore don't permit me to don't require me to deposit the money but therefore merely because an argument is permissible does not mean that argument is being accepted today that is we tried at the appropriate stage that's what malwa expressly says the last judgment cited by my learned friend is no uh, 2012 for scc 307 again to the same effect para 20 to my learned friend says merely because we have participated we have no right our right cannot be taken away para 22 except let me assume for the time being but that is irrelevant for the purpose of order 41 rule 5 and then last judgment 2021 ssc online 552 paragraph 7 so para 39 which again is on right to this issue at any point of time if it's a pure question of law but this is not a pure question of law this is a big question of law in fact but had they raised this issue we would have probably laid further evidence nonetheless in my submission adequate evidence is laid by us Thank you.
But this could not have been tried as a preliminary issue because this was leading of evidence. Had they raised that issue at appropriate stage, more evidence could have come in. Though in our submission, evidence as it, as it stands today is also good enough. But therefore, my respectful submission is no case is made out. As, the, as our court says, it is not an exceptional case. This is not something which shocks the conscience of the court. The ordinary rule of order 40 and rule 5, there is no reason made, no cause given to give a go by. But a, a defendant debtor who acknowledges debt year after year for almost eight years cannot turn around and say, sorry, sorry, my balance sheet is wrong. This is not my debt at all. This is the amount which my director received from another person and is wrongly shown in my accounts when the auditor himself is saying that this is duly certified by the management of the company. My Lordship is aware of the procedure under the Companies Act as to what has to be done if the accounts are wrongly written. No steps are taken for the purpose of correcting the accounts till today. Accounts continue to be operative even today. But I would therefore respectfully submit the application of stay must be rejected and they must be or they must be directed to deposit the full amount and they may be permitted to withdraw on such terms as the honorable court deems just and proper. That's all. But if your lordship has any query, I'll stay back otherwise. If I If you're not sure that query, I'll stay back. Otherwise, can I? At any stage, this yes. uh, uh, share certificate, because their case is <clears throat> that after once this MOU was to be effected by and between the parties, the share certificate will be in the name of the this Hinton International. Was there any query raised at any time in the cross examination? To Mr. Kamlesh. Uh, please see, uh, is it his case in the affidavit in chief mm. that this money was received by the company against my transfer of shares? That is not even his case. Please see. Where is, this, like where is the return? On an issue which is not even his case. No, not you cross-examining him. Well, he is cross-examining no, your client. No, 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 no. Please see my cross-examination. He doesn't suggest that this money has been paid to the company for purchase of the shares. Kindly go to cross-examination of my witness. Uh, convenience compilation, page 31. Uh, 31 to 36 is chief. 
37 cross starts please go only go to 45 cross starts Hmm. His case is page forty eight, para forty eight. ये बात खरीदने थी कि ऊपर प्रमाणित रकम एचएस का तो दर्शन भाई माटे दर्शन भाई ने मारे रुपया तेसो पच्चीस पर इतिहासी लाख में देवानों हिस्सों सरकों के बारे में आपने अंतर्ता था ये बात खरी न थी ये बात खरी न थी कि मारे दर्शन में इन चुकाव बातों से दी रकम रुपया तेसो पच्चीस पर इतिहासी लाख में रकम सामे मारे दावा मज़रे पर दस पंच पंचोत्तर करोड़ चेक थी चुक वेला चें But he must plead it in chief. But suggestion is not an evidence as the Lordship knows. Admission would be an evidence. These are all suggestions which are being denied. There is any any other witness from your side? No, from our side there is only one witness. Uh, one, take a chance. Only one. One. But therefore, I would therefore respectfully submit uh, suggestions which are denied is not an evidence. Merely because you suggest something, it doesn't become an evidence unless it is admission. And therefore, I would submit there is no cases made out for the purpose of stay under any circumstance. That's all. But can I be excused? May I take some time for a brief rejoinder? A few issues, if you like. Okay. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, very well. Thank you. Yes. At one tomorrow, if I may. Maybe come at one tomorrow. tomorrow what, at one. what is the possible time you likely to Not take? more than half. 15, 15, 20 minutes. All right. In that case, around 1 one fifteen. One fifteen, one fifteen, uh -huh. half an hour would be. Yes. Yes, please take this. Hmm. 77 priority no, first just uh, let's go because some some of the orders will need to be passed in this just call out from 15 number
Nobody is present. Third August. Number sixteen, Mr. M. S. Tiridi, Mr. E. S. This is a DNA report has come. Just open it. Cut it from here. Cut it from here. Open it, please. Mr. Chavala is present. No, it's not. Mr. Trivedi. Civil application uh, for stay number two of 2021 in first appeal 4540 of 2000.
this is chai this is english by not body this is body wala this is not over the upper tool for it here okay okay Civil application for state two of two thousand twenty one in first appeal four five four zero of two thousand eighteen. Um, this is an application preferred by the appellant. Panchal Tejas Girish Bhai seeking to stay the implementation, operation, and decision of the family court Dahod. Dated four ten two thousand eighteen in family suit, eighteen of two thousand seventeen. His application for stay, number one of two thousand eighteen, in the very appeal, came to be disposed of on eighth September two thousand twenty. Quorum Justice Chayan, as his lordship then was and. The Quorum Justice Ileshwara. Later on, he once again moved such application, and this court on nine nine two thousand twenty one. In first appeal four five three nine of two thousand eighteen, requested for. The interim relief with this court passed the following order: Quorum Justice Pardewala, as his lordship then was, and Justice Vaibhavi Nanavati. Uh, please reproduce that order from uh, page sixty-five. This is paragraph. This application is once again moved. With the identical prayer, uh, on twenty sixth April two thousand twenty two. The present applicant, appellant, had insisted for paternity test of the child. The court ordered this. You can reproduce the order, Justice Desai and Justice Anirudh Mai. Paragraph on 4th july 2022 when the report had not been received from the director of forensic science laboratory the following order came to be passed you can reproduce the order today the dna division of the directorate of forensic science has sent the report Where the conclusion provides this, you can reproduce the conclusion part of it. It is thus clear that the DNA profile of both the litigating parties are found consistent as biological parents of. The daughter, Hitavanshi, mm -hmm. 
as a report has come, it says that uh, they are the biological parents of the girl. You will be given a copy. Because it was decided that the copy may not be given to any of the party. Only the result would be declared in the interest of the baby. She is just a nine-year-old, therefore. Doesn't matter. I mean, you will be entitled, provided we just do not mind. Earlier it is recorded in the order, therefore I am just picking All right. up my logic. But we will be saying because ultimately it is in the in her benefit. Uh, we, the uh, father I went on doubting, you know. The, yes, it was decided uh, or uh, uh, consent by both the party hmm. that they will not. <sighs> Without prior permission of this person. So anyway. If the ghost is not already born by the applicant, the official let the court know of the same. The report shall be kept in a sealed cover and as directed earlier without the court's permission the same shall not be parted with please uh, can just seal it and keep this entire thing because there are two reports huh? so this is uh, this is still sealed and we've not opened it this one has been this you can seal it keep it and in, in this both the things noticing the fact that uh, the learned advocate mr trivedi is not present today there is no alternative arrangement made by him. And this is the third application, seeking the stay of implementation of the judgment and decree. For want of prosecution and even otherwise on merit, it is required to be dismissed. Okay. The matter but, shall be proceeded with, the, the appeal shall be proceeded with being the criminal appeal of the year 2018. 17th August. Please, 17th August. Please, much of the record and proceedings, if are not called for, the same shall be called for without play. Much of it. He put a properly back to page. You can just give us the 17 number. So, all matters, um, see, please give 17 to 26. In all matters, wherever there is a combination of delay. The group is there, so therefore, you know, you can have it by a common order. But the applications to share the withdrawal for the equity. The Shavah must be a child with the pain of three years. For me, I could throw the child. Correct. The art to one just shame of combination of three and it's a market. Three fifty six days. The tools to bring the hairs. Okay. 
Okay. The one is uh, in a, a criminal appeal. One in criminal appeal is uh, one two double six is a filing number, huh? Nineteen. Is an application for condonation of delay under Section Five of the Limitation Act. The delay post is uh, three fifty six days, which is sought to be condoned. Rule and APP AGP will waive considering submissions of both the sides and also noting the sufficiency of the cause in explaining the delay. Quotas of the opinion that the same deserves to be condoned. Accordingly, rule is made absolute. Civil application two of 2019. This is an application for bringing the legal heirs on the legal heirs of the deceased on record. Paragraph we have heard. Leonard Edukit, Mr. Mean, according to whom? This uh, the the death had occurred during the pendency of the reference case, and therefore the reference court was moved for correction of the award judgment and award. The court has already since exceeded to the request of the applicant and having passed the order Saturday, no, Friday, Friday. 22nd, 22nd uh, July 2000 22 the request is made to allow the heirs to be brought on the day in wake of the order pass, you can issue a notice to learn the GP, she would wait. And in wake of the order pass by the trial court, and as the person concerned has died during the pendency, the request to bring the heir on the record is permitted. It's in wake of this order of uh, trial court of uh, 22nd, it's being permitted. Please. So it will be put. Uh, in there are condemnation of daily just check as to what is the number of these and for bringing the heirs also simultaneously this will be either you can have all of them together or you can individually please i'm okay you can give us the uh, we had uh, kept the matter Number two, three, and four for dictation. Seventy-seven. Somebody had asked for the report. The number two, three, and four. Tashish to decide. Those of you who have any uh, urgency may take the date from the court master. Yeah, I just request for that short substituted notice in item 43, which I mentioned in the morning. We passed the order. Hmm. That's 43, uh, please give it separately for the uh, notice. Public notice will uh, pass the order. So there's a notice has to be by way of a publication in the newspaper. Let's take you it know, to just may specify 
uh, either we'll see the, either of the three newspapers or any one that you'll achieve my field. Any whichever is has got a better so circulation. Bhavnagar Gujarat Samachar would have probably the better circulation. I I don't have any personal knowledge of Bhavnagar, but uh, if anybody has got in, in by by circulation, it is the number one. Gujarat Samachar, you can see publication. Grateful. And we'll uh, keep it. Uh, uh, it's your, written your, in your deposit your deposit uh, of amount uh, no i so don't know no, oh, for the newspaper yes. yes i thought that we would no, okay. uh, newspaper newspaper uh, within one week Very they'll well. prepare it after one week and then four weeks of this we'll keep this uh, returnable on 2nd september so may i request we will do it as quickly as possible because otherwise your lordships had made notice returnable on 25th today in fact uh, only thing is that direct service affidavit took time. Therefore, uh, so, but then would you be you not been in a position to serve, no? Sir, because it's closed. I have attached photo. Correct. Uh, so, so therefore, the service will have to be effective. Public service, the notice by public yes. notice. Okay. Uh, so, but if it's so wanted a fifteen days time. That is what I was uh, saying. If if that appeals to my lord, we that, can deposit within case, four days also the amount. Fine. So we'll keep this on 25th of uh, uh, August. Oh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. So let it be the 15 days, not the four weeks time, but two weeks time. Two. Grateful. All right. Uh, so that will be the order. The rest of the advocates who uh, so is wanting it uh, this week or the next week, you can grant the time. Grateful. Preferably just grant the 8th and the 10th August because there's less number of the matters on that time. I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, special, sir. Yes. I'm sorry, ma'am. My lord, for a shorter date, should we request a court pass to direct? Uh -huh. Please, ma'am. I'm, so, I'm sorry about the uh, indulgence. I'm not the uh, sale number 77, but I had requested for. Yes, you requested we have something to complete. So we're just doing it. You can take Lord, the date. It may be kept on any such date. Lord, when uh, we'll say it to please yeah. ask the court master. Special civil application 5956 of 2021. There's a group of three matters basically. Uh, all the three matters are having similar facts in the law involved, and therefore they're being decided by a common judgment. The facts are drawn from the special civil application 5956 of 2021 for the purpose of adjudication. These are the petition preferred under Article 226 of the Constitution of India challenging the order dated 24th September 20 in original application number 396 of 2019 by Central Administrative Tribunal Ahmedabad. The tribunal rejected the petition for issuance of direction against the letter of National Institute of Design dated 11 July 2019, whereby the petitioner is terminated with effect from 30th September 2019 without affording any opportunity of representation to the petitioner in the following factual background. The respondent number one published an advertisement inviting the recruitment of project executives for an ID MSME design clinic scheme on 5th July 2010. First of the respondent number one had designed the project executives. for assisting the project head in various implementation schemes and activities of the project. Not schemes, but the activities of the project. The preference was to the postgraduates of MBA graduates in engineering having two to three years of experience in marketing field. And those who were willing to travel extensively for project work
the petitioner applied for this seed recruitment and his interview was conducted on 22nd July 2010 and 23rd July 10 at design clinic scheme for MSME National Institute of Design Paladin. His selection was made and appointment was appointment letter also was received on 27 July 10. That also gave the details of the tasks and the responsibility as well as his remuneration, etc. Paragraph This appointment for a fixed term initially had been extended on 14 February 2011 for a further period of six months from 27 January 2011 on the same terms and conditions as specified in the appointment letter. By different Letters till 30th September 2014, such extensions came and the pay scale also was increased of the petition. Petition has been paid, all the benefits as are being paid to the regular employee. Paragraph, it is averred by the petitioner that on 28th October 2014, further extension has been received and his salary also had been increased. He was redesignated as project officer for the period of one year, starting from 1st October 2014. First of the contract was extended. Again, on 31st March 2016, with a further increase in the pay, all benefits were also paid as were being paid to the regular employee. Promotion also was given to him on 3 11 2016 to the post of project officer. And this was for the period of three years from 1st April He was given along with the appointment letter on 18-11-2016 the general service rules which has no close for termination or for that matter the appeal, interdepartmental appeal. In short, it is a case of the petitioner that his service had continued for the past nine, nine years and two months with NID, where he has been grant, he has been given not only the pay as 
per the pay slip, which included the benefit of contributory provident funds, TNS allowance, house rent allowance. What is FG? What is FG allowance? F, F for food and G for Goa. No idea? FG allowance. If you do not know as a council maybe, for them. Maybe food grain allowance. Food grain. Maybe food, food grain. grain. We've been always telling that, you know, everybody writes this uh, abbreviation as if these are all... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is understood by everyone. It's supposed to be knowing that. <laughs> and also the benefit of 7th Pay Commission as given to the regularly appointed persons for similar work. Why are you giving this 7th Pay Commission then? You know, since, my Lord, uh, we are uh, also getting grant, my Lord, for Ach. some of the, because we are running the education institution, my Lord. For that purpose, my Lord, uh, on the so norms. This is 9.2 years in different projects. Not sure. Not sure. Uh, it is the say of the petitioner that uh, he had agreed to be in different departments and interdepartmental transfer also had, had happened within the main campus. However, to the Sabera, however, to the shock and dismay of the petitioner, Koma has averred, his appointment was terminated, giving the reason that the DCS MSME project had been concluded with effect from 30th September 2019. You don't have now that project any longer? No, that is already completed and in 2019. Hmm. MSME. Is so there? there are no different kind of projects which are there? No, other projects are there. But, but the MSME are not. Not sure. This very project, uh, under the central government, we lot, what mm. uh, the project was given to us mm. was brought to an end by the central government and therefore we had to close it. Paragraph and appeal came to be filed to the director as per clause 4.13 of this. As per my instruction, central government, the project is at the uh, similar projects are ongoing, only NID has stopped it. As per my instructions, leadership. They have stopped it. They have stopped it. They're not requiring leadership. Clause 4.13 of the service no, rules, no, regulations, and delegation of administration, administrative and financial power of NIT at Delhi. Oh, sorry, Pallady. Sapera, a reminder also was sent. for the appeal and the representation made to the director. A communication was sent to the standing committee of the governing council. Neither the director nor the standing committee of the governing council had replied. Therefore, the petitioner had approached the central administrative tribunal by preferring the original application 396 of 2019. After availing opportunities to both the sides, The application of the petition has been rejected. This is a serious grievance on the part of the petitioner. According to 
him. This is violative of principles, equality principle, and amounts to serious discrimination against the same class of employees whose work conditions and all other benefits are the same. Paragraph, it is uh, further the say of the petitioner that in case of uh, Sri Vimal Nair, whose, whose service also periodically extended has been regularized, which is indicative of the fact that uh, the things are happening at the whims and fences of the respondent authorities. Is also given, he is also, also averted that respondent section of regularizing one Purandar Dutta in 2016 who was also appointed without any advertisement and working with the petitioner in the very project till 2016 is an action which is expressly discriminatory and bad in law. Prayers sought for are as follows. Hmm. Actually, with the prayers, yeah. <laughs> you can simply say that uh, for therefore the urge is made for quashing and setting aside the order of the Central Administrative Tribunal Pilla Malakut, they are a cat lucky that too. Dated 24th September 2020, in original application 396 of 19. With a further request to caution set aside the communication dated 11 July 2019, and to reinstate the petitioner with full back wages. Paragraph on issuance of notice. On behalf of uh, respondent number 224, registrar of the institute NID has filed affidavit in reply. Respond number three is the director, oblique chairman, and number four is the secretary and head general administration of respondent institute. All uh, evidence are denied uh, emphatically. The maintainability of the petition also has been questioned. Another grievance raised is that the petitioner has not joined all the candidates against whom the allegations of favoritism are made. 
there are highly disputed questions of facts involved in the petition and therefore they cannot be decided by way of an affidavit. It is a say of uh, this. Uh, it is a say of the registrar that the institute is uh, one of the multidisciplinary institute in the field of design, education, and research, and it functions as an autonomous body under the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, comma Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. It has been declared as an institution of national importance by the Act of Parliament by virtue of National Institute Design Act, 2014. This institute undertakes several projects on behalf of the government, semi-government and private entities at national and international level, full stop. The respondent uh, institute also recruit some employees through advertisement specifically for a particular project called MSME, M -S -M -E, all capital, design clinic scheme. Funded by the Ministry of MSME. And the object of the project was to provide support and design expertise and design awareness as a remedial solution for creating a competitive advantage of the country and for improving the competitiveness. It is a single coordinating body or nodal agency for implementation of design clinic scheme for increasing the manufacturing competitiveness of micro and small enterprise across the country. The scheme, schemes, not scheme, but the schemes aim to reach out to MSMEs by providing handholding support, design expertise, and financial assistance through various activities. It is, a, it is specifically contended that the project was since closed with effect from 31st July 2019 by the central government, termination has come. 
the advertisement itself had been quite clear that the appointment was purely on a contractual basis and not on a regular or sanctioned post. Paragraph, it is not being disputed that the appointment of the petitioner was by letter of appointment dated 29 July 2010 as project executive for a period of three months for the MSME design clinic schemes project. It is clearly mentioned therein that this is a project-based contract appointment and it does not establish any relationship of the employer and employee between the institute and the petitioner. He would also have no right to claim permanency and unless extended, this would come to an end. The relationship would come to an end. There was no appointment on the sanction post. And as per the policy of the institute, he was paid the pay scale. Paragraph. The elements with regard to making some other persons permanent, it is the specific uh, case of the respondent that they were made permanent on regular sanction post of the institute through separate advertisement and separate recruitment public selection process. And only on need base, they were attached to MSME DCS. They were neither appointed under the MSME DCS, nor through its advertisement and selection process. Relying on various decisions of the Apex Court, it is urged that the project based appointment is a purely contractual appointment and its termination cannot be questioned before the court of law. And even if challenged, the order of the cat is not to be interfered with. The affidavit and rejoinder is filed by the petitioner, which may not require any further dilation. Paragraph you have heard extensively, learned advocate. You just write the name of Mr. Ashish Desai and other advocates also who have argued in both the matters for the petitioners along the line of the memo of petitions. They have argued extensively and urged this court that the cat has not appreciated the factual metrics and also the law point on the subject. The practice adopted by the respondent also being discriminatory warrants interference following other decisions which are sought to be relied upon. Paragraph per contra, learned advocate Mr. D. H. Shukla appearing for the NIT has earnestly urge this court that uh, if there is any appointment made on a contractual basis without any sanction post, no person can insist on being continued on the same. Those who had been allowed to be made permanent, they were appointed, though they were appointed against some other posts, but they were the sanction post and hence the two can, cannot be quitted. And IT being a premier institute, there is no reason for it to discriminate. So long as there was a requirement under the project, 
the hiring had been done here. It is not being disputed that time and again there had been an extension. But the, every procedure has been transparent. And hence he has urged that the decisions of the Apex Court shall need to be borne in mind while considering the order of the cat. We'll continue tomorrow in the evening. Okay. Just give it to me separately also. Sir, so, serial number 39, sir. Here, serial number 39, here, there was an interim arrangement, sir, uh, to his, uh, uh, the first appeal is preferred against the Milord Sir. He was the decree granted by the London Trial Court. Now, uh, at the time of hearing, Milord Sir, your Lordship has referred the matter to the mediation center. And till that, Milord the other side made a statement that uh, he will instruct his client, Milord that uh, he will not remarry in the interim period, Milord That statement may be extended, Milord I have taken the sense of Mr. Patel, Milord He said till the next date it may be extended. Appeal is admitted. No, it is not yet. We'll admit the appeal, which automatically will bring into effect the stay. Lord. His statement also will continue, and over and above that, the pendency of this matter will automatically stay. Nobody, there is one inhibition of anyone uh, uh, marrying, and they say that so long as an appeal is, there is a pendency of the appeal. Yes. It will be. It will preclude a person from section fifteen. Uh, yes. Section fifteen. I understand. Yes. Which is the number? Uh, 39 Millards. 39, the interim arrangements. Since Millards, Mr. Patel is not here, Lord Sid, may kindly keep it in the next week, Millards, because. Uh, Have I, you spoken to him? Yes, he has said, Millards, for uh, uh, extension of arrangement, he is not having any objection. Mr. Patel, uh, appearing for the other side, according to learned advocate, has no objection to the earlier arrangement to be continued. Let the same be done till 1st uh, of August. Matter shall be posted for what happened in the arbit uh, in mediation, Millards. I think it is failed, Millards. Mediation according uh, as per instructions of the an uh, advocate for the appellant has not succeeded. The matter shall be for shall be heard for the admission on first. On that day, we'll yes, pass yes, on. So may I request? No. Matter at serial number 59. Please take it. We have a meeting. So please take the date, person. Yes. Please take that. Give the date. About thirty. By serial. Uh, I online. Online. 